Don't think so. Where do you want? I'm struggling. I'm struggling. It's straight. Have we already set the small floor? Have we, is it already set up? Well, 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 I don't want that. I, I want to call on every house for sale. I've been out today. When it comes to. What, what about one streaming? Oh, 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 no, are we already streaming? Are we already on live stream? Yes. Oh. 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 Uh, there's no more slots of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what time is that? Yeah. It's all right. We've got to be all we've got a fair bit of time here anyway. But, I mean, certainly... To How many more? Yeah, I mean... It's time next month. Let's just... Let's just... Let's just... Let's see if anyone else is still up. I think we'll have to... Um, what? With the... Can we, um, can we open the mayor's parlour door? And... The support seats? Yeah. Could... I mean, I could take... Yeah. I think it's certainly worth bringing up, or maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, a meeting in the, in the next week or something. Yeah. You'd get a lot of support. Yeah, good idea. I'm really disagree with you. Okay. I think that I'm going over you. I've got a yeah. yeah. I think um, I've got a cover. My feeling is that it would, it would be probably divisive to um, take it with, with it. Like, I mean, if you want to, yeah, to the point that I need it, you want to just go, yeah, 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 I think, um, do we have any apologies with you? Where are you going? Florida. Florida Keys. Okay. So I think we should move forward with public participation now. The, uh, public participation now. It's protection orders. But my guess is that they have been asked also at last. And they'll come up with what's going on. Remember that um, from uh, a little while ago. Oh, we got the pieces up. Oh. So that's, you know. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. He doesn't understand. No, I don't. <coughs> He's got to go through for a little bit. Uh, uh, that's it. Why were you like that? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 I don't know this stuff. Councillors, uh, yes. any councillors who need to take their seats, please do. Terry's there. So good evening, everyone. We're just on the edge of our fire limit for the room, so there is no scheduled fire um, alarm this evening, no practice. So if we do hear an alarm, it will be for real. And if the alarm goes off, please make your way down, carefully downstairs you came in. If that stairwell is blocked by fire for any reason, there is another exit on the other side of this wall, which goes down out here. You'll be able to follow the illuminated signs. It will take you to the fire assembly points where hopefully everybody will be safe. If you need the loo while you're here, just go out of this door, turn to your right, and it's the door immediately on your left. 
We're now going to start the public participation section of tonight's meeting. Uh, unfortunately, we only have a limited number of spaces for public participation. I know many of you wish to speak to some of the items on the agenda tonight and things that are happening in the town. So um, there are quite a few folk on my list. If you would like to come to the front of the table to address the council, that would be great. And um, if you could try and keep your presentation to about three minutes, that would be very useful for helping everybody who wishes to speak have the opportunity and for everyone to be heard. Uh, first on my list is Simon Gantz, Cleaner Environment. Simon. Into this. Speaking to this. Okay, great. Yes. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, bringing the precautionary principle originally and for upholding it and recently voting to uphold it again. So thank you, everyone who's worked very hard on the council for that. We really do appreciate it. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about electrosensitivity and also some of the effects of electromagnetic radiation on the population, which... Um, the noticeable effects. There are other effects, but most people don't notice. So the noticeable effects are tinnitus, sleeplessness, stroke insomnia, brain fog, learning, memory problems, heart palpitations, fatigue leading to chronic fatigue, stress, including skin irritation, eye damage, headaches, and disorientation. There are more I haven't mentioned here. Also, I'd like to speak about the insect population which appears to have gone down to about 30% of what it has been over the years, over the last few years, where they've been rolling out more and more electromagnetic radiation, the insect population is dropping and dropping. There's a correlation, provable. Um, so also Glastonbury is a, 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 t a town where people come for healing. They come for meditation, to seek peace, and electromagnetic frequencies do not offer a good environment for, for those purposes. Um, yep, yeah, Bridie's Yard. I used to run Bridie's Yard at one point, the area. And when we were there, a friend of mine has been measuring radiation for 10 years. And the levels have been, since we stopped 5G, the actual 4G levels have gone right up. So they've really gone through the roof. So it's actually... It's helped in some ways, but it actually hasn't helped stop the enhancement of electromagnetic radiation on the population. Um, the industry have actually raised the levels to accommodate 5G without any scientific backing for that whatsoever. And other countries have much, much lower safety levels than we have in this country already. Okay, um, it's not green. This 5G, this electromagnetic frequency, is not green. It's using lots of electricity, and vibration causes heat. So it's global warming, which is one thing I would have thought a lot of the green councils would not wish to take place. Okay, smart cities is one of the agenda of 20, agenda 20, 2030. Um, these would be saturation of electromagnetic frequencies. Um, it's really not suitable for life forms to exist in, and electric cars which cause damage to the environment, mining. There are many, many reasons to stop this. Um, and also during lockdown. So 5G, even though everyone's told, oh, you have to stay home and this is absolute necessary, absolute emergency, 5G was being rolled out with, by people not wearing masks, not social distancing. How come there's one rule for some people, another rule for others? Okay, so corporations really doing the damage, even though the people are being pointed the finger at, it's the corporations and the corrupt governments which are doing the damage. Look at fracking, for example. So the government was behind fracking, which is further environmental damage, despicable behavior. Um, so we are facing an ecological disaster if we allow this to carry on. So at the moment, we have a choice of fear or love. We need to overcome our fear, all of us, every one of us, and step up and do the right thing for the goodness of humanity and for all the people and the children and the future of all of us. Oh. Time is now. So we have a choice to create a beautiful future that is free 
fair, healthy, and a thriving town. We've got the opportunity to set a good example to the rest of England and the world. Right now, we have that opportunity. It's my wish to help create Glasson to, be, to become an electromagnetic quiet zone, to reduce the radiation temporarily right back to 2G until we can make the technology safe. Then we can roll it out further. Also, even the youngsters, when they're running around with their smartphones, it's damaging to them, it's damaging to their eyes. And when the industry and the government say, it's safe, it's safe, people kind of believe that. But we know there's ample evidence to prove it's not safe. Thousands of peer-reviewed scientific studies, thousands of them, being ignored by the industry and by the government. So I ask, let's work together, all of us. Let's work together. May all we do be for the highest good. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Next on the list, I have Siddika Patterson, precautionary principal. Thank you. So I'd like to just um, follow up on the precautionary principle. Um, but noting that in, uh, John Cousins said that Glastonbury is a town punching above its weight in relation to, to putting out this principle, um, and many other councils followed. Um, there were four recommendations made um, uh, for the after the report of the advisory committee, advising to write to MPs asking them to establish an inquiry into the safety of 5G, calling for the UK government and Public Health England to undertake an independent scientific study into the non-thermal effects of 5G and into electro, electro hypersensitivity, and also lobbying the International Commission of Non-Ionising Radiation to take account of the non-thermal effects of EMFs in their guidelines to limit exposure. Um, so I contacted um, the town clerk on the 5th of January to, to find out about how these recommendations have been followed up. Um, and there had been a receipt of a letter from the uh, Department of Health and Social Care in October 2020, which referenced an independent study by the Government and Public Health England into the uh, non-thermal effects of 5G. Um, and also referencing research by PHE into electro hypersensitivity. Um, that reply wasn't followed up, um, and also I asked if, if there were any additional uh, copies of communication from the council or any re receipts, um, and apparently there, there weren't any, or they were they were deleted because of GDPR. Yeah, could you turn that? GDPR uh, concerns to delete emails after one year. So I request that the Glastonbury Town Council follows up on the reply um, to the Department of Health and Social Care and also request copies of replies from any other parties that it communicated with. Uh, and I'm also concerned to make sure that whatever GDPR um, uh, guidances you're following do not delete um, important information and that there is some, some audit trail of, of, uh, of what's going on. And then um, 19th of October last year, um, the Town Council uh, voted to refuse a planning application for a 5G mast on Park Farm Road um, and lodged an objection on Mendip uh, portal. Um, and, uh, and then by, that wasn't communicated to the, the steering committee as far as I'm aware. Um, we found out about it by by chance, um, and created a, a campaign group called Glastonbury for Safe Technology, which has been meeting weekly since November, mm. raising public awareness about the dangers of 5G, and has elicited over 400 objections for the Park Farm Road mast. Uh, in January, uh, Mendip campaigner Karen Churchill created a document listing 10 questions to be sent to Mendip Planning, requiring answers before the Glastonbury and Froome 5G mast could be processed. These questions reference the precautionary principle and were effectively an expansion of the recommendations of the steering committee. Uh, there were questions regarding the regulation of exposure to radio frequency radiation. Karen circulated this document to all Glastonbury councillors asking for co-signatures and didn't receive a single reply. 
Glastonbury Town Councillors, we are asking for your support in protecting the health and well-being of the people of Glastonbury and, it, and also in upholding the rights under the Equality Act of those living in, living in Glastonbury who are electrosensitive and whose lives will be made miserable if 5G comes to our town. Yesterday we found that the Park Farm Road Master will go to Pat Mendit Planning Board on Wednesday the 16th of March, a week tomorrow. Um, we have permitted only one member of the public to represent us and we are also allowed a representative from Glastonbury Town Council to speak. So thank you to uh, Councillor uh, Mike uh, Smythe for doing that. Um, we're also allowed additional... Uh, week tomorrow, yes. Yeah. So also we are allowed additional councillors, ward, all the ward councillors from Benedict uh, Ward and also councillors from the adjoining wards, so that's all, all the other wards, to speak. So I would, I would very much appreciate if, um, if you would contact us to, um, to say if you're willing to speak. And today I learned that the, the case officer has recommended that the must uh, for both Glastonbury and Froome are approved despite the fact that local campaigners have shown that the site plans are inaccurate and do not allow sufficient space for the MAST ancillary cabinets. So our campaign is in communication with the Mendit Planning Board councillors informing about the risks associated with 5G and we have asked um, Mendip to answer the questions uh, to, uh, permitted by, submitted by Karen. So um, I ask once again that Glastonbury Town Council upholds the precautionary principle in action and in spirit as well as words and stands with our campaign to keep our town safe and prosperous. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next on the list I have Sally Pullinger, Wireless Technology. Hello, I'm just going to add a little actually because um, my two colleagues have just really pretty much spelled it out and I'm also coming forward to speak about um, the 5G mast which I'm very shocked has been suggested for this incredible town dedicated to health, spirituality and it's become really a place of pilgrimage again from um, old times. So I've got a speech here but I'm actually going to just free freelance for just a, a minute or two to add a grandmother's point of view. So I'm a mother, grandmother, I've been here for 40 years. And it's beautiful, some children came in and I thought, yeah, some children came in to represent the generation that we're all here, really, to protect the people. I mean, you are the people who protect the people. And we are the grandmas and the mums who, who go about our business and who, you know, are very concerned for the health. And, you know, it's extraordinary to amended district council. The one thing you can't do, really, apparently, with any validity, is to, come to, to make a point about the health of the population. Apparently, 5G is terribly healthy for the population. And, actually, every paper you read, every study, anything that actually really has looked into 5G, well, actually, 4G as well, and all of our electromagnetic frequency-based lives that they are now. You know, we know that there are these invisible, growing health problems in our world. It's just not a new piece of information at all. So that was really what I wanted to do, is put a big emphasis on, you know, I'm so shocked that there was no education given to the people of Glastonbury about the fact there was going to be a 5G mass. I mean, we found out completely, uh, just by mistake. We were just like, oh my goodness. And we had to sort of like, pile into action because we felt that the voices that weren't, aren't being heard and we think that there are many people that are not informed in Glastonbury that don't know anything about 5G. Maybe they don't even know about 4G that's already striking, you know, strong energy on, on people's health in the town. So anyway, that's me. I'm a grandma. I love my family. I love everybody's family. I'm a counsellor. I'm a healer. Uh, I'm one of a large community in this town who hold up the town as a spiritual place of pilgrimage of visitors come here because we're a place of healthiness. So I just want to read the very last paragraph, really, because I know there are other people who want to speak. But um, uh, So, yeah, uh, I believe that Glastonbury, known by many, to be the heart of the world. Oh, yes. In a, a, a visit, that we would do well to lean heavily towards claiming 
in a big way the title of a 5G free zone dedicated to spiritual advancement and all modes of healing and well-being, including recovery from EMF pollution. Because in the years to come, the cities will be pulsing with intense electromagnetic frequency radiation and people will need places to go where their bodies can rest and recover from the onslaught of these frequencies. Thank you very much, Sally. Um, I note that um, Councillor Cottle wished to, to speak. Uh, Councillor. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, one, I think you're probably at the wrong meeting. You're at the right meeting for Glastonbury Town, but you do all need to show up next, uh, next Wednesday on Up Mend It, okay? Uh, I think that's the thing. But there is also something, unfortunately, that you'll have to bear in mind that myself and Councillor McDougall will not be able to vote because we were classed as, pre, as predetermined already. And, uh, yeah, we're predetermined. Because well, I am, anyway. I don't know if you are. Are you, are you, in, are you against 5G? No, 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 no. I wish that you don't ask a councillor who's on a planning board whether or not to be well, determined themselves. No, but I think I put myself down as predetermined. Is that kind of advice? Because the town council has already objected, I believe. We haven't objected. We've, we've reiterated the precautionary principle. Well, councillors, just I don't want to turn this into a debate, but um, councillors who are on the planning uh, board. If, if they feel that they're predetermined, as you have done, mm -hmm. um, you, you've done the right thing. But councillors um, are able to wait and listen to all sides of the argument who are on the planning board and, and make their mind up at the moment that that happens. Councillor McDougall. Well, I, th I think there have been some legal cases since we've done our, our, um, our advisory group. So the, the situation has changed. Thank you. I, I, um, I don't want to turn this part of the evening because we haven't even opened the meeting yet into a debate, but I do appreciate members of the public coming to raise their concerns about this important issue and I'm very conscious about the planning application that's going to the planning board on Wednesday next. Um, we still have people though who wish to speak in public participation, so next we have Heather Hall from Tor Leisure and Glastonbury Cricket Club. Heather. Um, good evening, Your Honour and councillors, members of the public. Um, those who don't know me, I'm the chair at uh, Glastonbury Cricket Club. Um, we are based at Tor Leisure. I just wanted to say a few words. Obviously, um, I think this is the last meeting before Perda. Um, obviously, I've turned up at a lot of <laughs> council meetings over the last couple of years. So I wanted to say thank you to the councillors for listening to me and for supporting the cricket club down there. Um, it's not been an easy couple of years, as you know. Um, no thanks to Fusion et al. Um, but we are going forward, we're growing, we have a now an adult section. Our youth and children are expanding, we have extra teams. If anybody's interested in bringing their children down to the club, we'd be most welcome. We have lots of different programmes going on. Um, and we're very excited about uh, investment down at Tour Leisure for a new building. Um, it will be transformational for the cricket club. And we're very excited for that going forward. Um, so I wanted to just really say thank you to everybody. And Ian's been on the, Ian, Councillor Tucker rather, <laughs> has been on the uh, Town Deal Board. And uh, we've had a lot of support from the council. And we really appreciate that because it will be a massive difference for the Cricket Club. And it's very exciting times. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello there. <laughs> Next on the list, I have Amanda Marshall, twinning with Pat Moss. Hi. Um, well, turn out. I don't know what town. Thank you. Hi. It was about the twinning we have with Pat Moss. Um, I feel I'd like to make a pilgrimage there. Oh, sorry. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, yes, it's about our twinning. We are a town of pilgrimage. We're a wonderful town. 
I love living here. I'm very honoured to live here, so thank you very much. I'm very honoured to be part of this amazing community that shows up, that stands up, thank goodness. I'd like to make a pilgrimage with my children to the Isle of Patmos. I'd like to represent our town. I'd very much like to be an official ambassador for our town, mm -hmm. take the candle of unity and light it along the way, take some gifts to Patmos for our perpetual twinning, and also I'd like to do it in honour of Geoffrey Ash, who I believe was a, a patron of this whole twinning. And ideally, I'd, I'd like to see some sort of recognition. I mean, it's the first thing you see as you come into our town that we are twinned with Patmos. And these are biblical times that we're in. And this is, this is a, a real sacred union that we have with this island. And I'd like to reignite that. And I'd love your permission to go with your blessing and to make that happen. So that's where I'm coming from. Kat, how do we feel about this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a show of hands would suffice. Wow! Yeah. Thank you! Thank you, I'd be deeply honoured. Thank you very much. Amanda, I, I've been in communication with the Mayor of Patmos over the period of time that I've been there, and I would be delighted to pass on a letter that you could hand deliver to the Mayor for, on our behalf. That would be great. Thank yes, you. Yes, please. Yes, let's do it. We are an Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next I, next I have Paul Kingston who wishes to talk about uh, the Connect Centre Love Sleeping. Thank you, Your Honour, and, and hello everyone. I'm not Paul Kingston, but um, he is in the room. Um, he's one of my colleagues as part of the outreach team working from the Connect Centre in Wales. And, uh, I'm going to try and do this without a microphone. Uh, I think it's going to pay by the nods. All right. Yeah, okay. So, would you mind telling us your name just for our record? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, my name is Tom Atty. Thank you, Tom. Um, for something very close to 10 years, the Connect Centre has been contracted on a yearly basis by Mendip District Council to provide the homelessness outreach services. We've got very good relationships with multiple agencies, and we feel we're uh, an embedded part of the community. And I feel it's fair to say, in recent weeks, we've heard very much that we're highly regarded for the work that we do. However, with less than two months notice, Mendip District Council have let us know they're not going to renew the contract, effectively terminating the contracts of the five staff as of 31st of this month. Uh, four of the staff, I think, are here with me this... Yeah, we're all here. Um, so many of the agencies that we work with are deeply shocked and have questions about the new format and what's coming for the people of Glastonbury and the people of Mendip or Whiteley. Mendip District Council have determined to provide these services in-house from the 1st of April using a lower staff number. We're very concerned that Mendip will not be will not have a viable rough sleeper service up and in flight to serve the community by the 1st of April. Um, obviously, this is, we, we fear to the detriment of the local community, especially the mo those most marginalised. Um, and in these current times, I need not say, it's all the more of a, of a worry. They are yet to externally advertise these new positions. Uh, their roadside homelessness work position has been vacant for some months. And I know that some of the issues in this community very much look at the, the, you know, the roadside homeless community. Roles like these are very, very hard to fill, and I mean mostly that it takes a long time to build networks and relationships and trust. Mendip District Council have to date issued no detail of the shape of the new service to service users, to key agencies or to the community in general, and I think it's conspicuous that there's been an absence of consultation. I don't know of any. So we're here to highlight our serious concerns about how the new service will look, what it will deliver, we shall see. At the moment, we run out of the Connect Centre in Wales. We have a, a, a real heart about what we do. We have a PO box, a clothes store, we run a food bank, we've got a shower, we provide community meals. We all need to be very observant and look closely about what follows in our wake. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.
Yeah, well, I'll phone on. I'll get an well, um, I wonder whether any of the amended councillors present wish to just respond. Councillor McDougall. Yeah, um, yes. Um, we've only just been told about this. And I'm as shocked as you are. I'm going to do everything I can to uh, point out uh, the failings of their decision. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not a Mendip councillor, but I'm a proud <laughs> Glastonbury councillor. And I um, really respect the work that the Connect Centre has been doing, the number of people they've helped. Uh, how they've worked very quietly with a lot of very vulnerable people, some of them, and other people who just need a bit of a hand along the way. And I would ask this council um, to drop standing orders, uh, Your Worship, so that we may discuss this during this evening's meeting and that we may make us uh, a very strong case for this not happening. It may be because Mendip are going to be disappearing because of Unitary at the end of this year. I think, and I feel very strongly, and for the people who use the service, that this should be absolutely thunderously by every councillor supported for the continuation of this service. It's not dysfunctioned at all. I haven't been complaints about how it works, and um, it, it will cause a lot. There will be a stream down of other problems <coughs> if this work disappears. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have. Um... I just... But with the help of the I now have a black here, and I have a little bit of black here, but I have to just shift the bottom and just have to put it on the shoe back. Without snacks. Thank you. Thank you for your input. I, I see that um, Councillor Cottle, I think. Let's yeah. see what Nick's got to say first. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, as some of you will know, some of you won't know, I am a member of the administration at Mendip. Uh, this has come as a surprise to me. I haven't seen it. Uh, I have seen, and I've looked at all of the, uh, the paperwork that comes through, and I have not noticed this anywhere. So tomorrow morning, rest assured, or well, I would have tonight, but my phone makes too much noise. Uh, I would have uh, been on it tonight because I'll find out exactly what's going on. Because rough sleepers, I know that the two portfolio, three portfolio holders that will cover that will be are very keen on keeping things, keeping rough sleepers safe. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll follow this up in the morning for you. <laughs> you can get hold of me if, if you need my email address. Just ask. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for raising that. Um, as a former trustee of the Robert Barton Trust, it's some of you who remember in town who um, did this similar sort of work to Elim Connect before Elim took it over. I'm also extremely unhappy to hear about this decision, especially as I also am amended Bishop Council, and the first I knew about it was a conversation in the street from one of the service providers. So it really isn't good enough for Mendip to, to do this without alerting councillors, and I hope that Councillor Cotter will be able to help resolve the situation. Thank you for raising it. Councillor, now for the homeless table, because you haven't got buyers down out anymore. Who, who is actually taking this place to actually uh, represent all the North Town Council for the homelessness? So he was dealing with it. He was the one that was actually dealing with all the homeless and helping the people on site. So who is representing that now? Well, thank you. He, he wasn't actually an official um, member of the council doing that. Uh, that wasn't his role, but he took that on himself personally. Okay. Other members of the council are also interested in the situation. Councillor McDougall, fine. Uh, so, so this is actually a, a Mendip 
a responsibility. It's not a responsibility of the town council, though clearly we we are all extremely interested in housing. It is a mended responsibility, and I can assure you, I'm on it every day with this one because it's it's top of my priorities. Clearly, uh, mended are not making it top of theirs. Well, thank you. That ends public participation. But before we move into council proper, I would like to ask Sally, as one of the most prestigious people to ever come into this council chamber, it's lovely to see you here, whether you would be happy to light the unity candle for us uh, at the start of the meeting. <laughs> I really would like to blast the unity candle indeed, with I'm sure everybody here for the unity of our community and for us all to come to wonderful agreement for the highest good of all. Aho and peace in Glastonbury. Aho. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure you'll all join me in sending our thoughts to all those who are suffering as a result of the conflict in Ukraine at the moment especially those whose loved ones have died in the past three or four weeks um, in the conflict and will join with me and councillors and ourselves to observe the silent minute and send our loving thoughts to those people. May peace prevail. You're here. Yeah. May peace prevail in all lands, all countries. Thank you very much, everyone. So now I'm opening the meeting proper and to ask the clerk whether he received any apologies for absence. Yes, Your Worship, we have apologies for absence received from John Keary, who was sadly just taken down with COVID, Christine Pryor, and we have apologies from Liz Lation, who is not feeling well. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, are there any declarations of interest in relation to tonight's meeting? I must declare that I am a member of the Town Deal Board and I'm also a director of Avalon Community Energy who are involved in the Town Deal's Clean Energy Project and a director of the Information Centre which will be doing the Health and Wellbeing Hub. My declaration is likewise with the Town Deal Board and the Factory Island Regeneration Project, the project next door, Dunstan's and the GIC. Thank you. Any other declarations? Councillor McDougall. So should I declare the Avalon Community Energy uh, Grant Making Board? Yes, I think it's probably prudent. That's the community benefit. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. If you notice that you have an interest while we're going through the meeting, please do raise it with me. Now, under item 72 of standing orders, I am suspending standing orders to make a motion that has not been tabled before the meeting. And the motion is very simple. And I have this, uh, Councillor Serena Roney Dougal is seconding me in proposing this motion that this council stands with Ukraine. And I have a show of hands of all those who agree. Thank you, that's carried unanimous. I now am happy to reinstate standing orders. 
Um, but as I do, this may be an opportune moment for the clerk to raise an issue as we've just passed a motion. Thank you, Your Worship. Not working. Thank you, Your Worship. You, you have asked if I would research the purchase of a Ukrainian flag. And I can share with you that we have one is on its way. It should be here for this by the end of the week. But in our civic policy, we have very clearly defined as to when we will fly, fly and what flags will be flown. So if you are intending to fly the Ukrainian flag, it is it's right and proper that you pass that as a motion this evening. Thank you. So, councillors, I am again suspending standing orders to put forward a motion that this council al allows the flag of Ukraine to be flown from our flagpole. Uh, can I have, do I have a seconder? Yeah, yes. Uh, councillor Barnett seconding the motion. Can I have a, a show of hands of all those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much, councillors. I reinstate standing orders and um, assume that we will continue with standing orders until the end of the meeting. Uh, we now have to approve the minutes of the last meeting of the Council. So, Councillors, I would draw your attention to page 48. Page 49. Uh, yeah, Your Worship, um, top of the page, can I ask our Town Clerk? Are the lights now working at the skateboard park? Um, Your Worship, they were scheduled to have been repaired last Friday, and I haven't heard they have not been. So I believe they have now been sorted. But if I haven't heard from Tor Sparkston for confirmation of that as yet. Thank you. Anything else on page 49, Councillor Lund? Yeah, um, item 178, um, with regards to the police liaison. I asked him. Well, why a uh, police liaison meeting with Councillor Henderson and myself had uh, not happened over the last few months, and I received a report back from Clark to tell me that uh, effectively, because of changes in the police team, it wasn't, they were not able to supply the manpower in order to talk to Councillor Henderson and myself over any instance or any particular reporting in that month. Um, I do feel that we do need to keep the councillors informed about what is happening in the town centre other than at the council meetings. And I also know that there's a liaison that takes place between the town park and one of the senior police officers in the district. But whilst we're heading rapidly towards another election, it's likely that we're not going to get that liaison now until after May. So I just want to register my concern about that. And if there's any way in which the police can help us by having a more frequent um, liaison with, with at least two or three of us, that would be very well. Thank you. I wonder whether anybody from the forces here this evening might wish to comment on that, or would you rather wait until your... your... I'll, I'll that you, you're Thank you very much. I am aware that the Police and Crime Commissioner may be watching us on YouTube tonight, so um, I do believe that you're interested in raising the amount of money that's raised to uh, improve the number of officers on the beat, and I sincerely hope that you'll take note of the request of Councillor Lund for more uh, operational officers in Glastonbury to be able to liaise with us. Thank you. Um, so we now move on to page 50. Page 51. Oh, 50. Councillor Barnett. I would just like to report under item uh, uh, received resolutions of the youth provision uh, the first item was to be represented interviews for the replacement of youth coordinators and in the renewal and uh, reconsideration of the SLA for the YMCA, it has been agreed in principle by the uh, youth worker manager, Mark Wilcox, that we would be very welcome to have a representative at future 
interviews. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else for page 50? Page 51. Councillor Lamb. Right. This refers to uh, item 186 and the town's fund. Um, it reports here that Councillor Lund raised concerns over the handling of information and the processes following, followed relating to two projects on the, the town's steel fund. That's all it really says. Um, I would like it to say a little bit more because I am very distressed about the fact that this council has not had the opportunity to debate losing one of the very vital projects from the whole town deal, and that's the Environment Centre and the Green College. And it seems to have gone unnoticed because the officers at the council at Mendip have not informed the members. Where did we hear that before? Strange. Um, it seems it's a fait accompli, a decision has been made, and the project's been taken out, and another project's been put in its place, which we all thought couldn't happen. We thought that new projects couldn't be brought in at this, this stage, but it was. So I would like a little bit more accuracy, please, on the, on the minutes, as to what I brought up and said, and what I was concerned about, because this table will not be aware otherwise, and you would not be aware otherwise, for something that you've been asking for for many years, a centre for the environment, a centre for the climate, and a centre for education, all rolled into one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Clark, have you made note of the... I have, Your Worship, yes. ...amendment. Thank you very much. Um, anything else on page 52? Page 53. <coughs> No? Oh, Councillor Rony do. Um, yes, so it says at the very top of page 53, um, the Climate Emergency Annual Report. Now, was that supposed to be the Climate Emergency Group newsletter? I'm slightly confused about it. Or was it a report from Melissa? It's Melissa's report. Melissa's report, thank you. So maybe that could be made clear, Melissa's report. The Climate Emergency and Resilience Officers Annual Report. Yeah. Thank you. We will make sure... Councillors, with the amendments that we've... Oh, sorry, Councillor McDougall. Well, this isn't an amendment, but um, we haven't yet got a letter off to James Heapy um, on housing and homelessness. On the...? Housing and homelessness. I did draft something. I've not seen the draft. Could you forward the draft to Gerald again, please? Your Worship, can I come in? We've yeah. had a text message from Mark Shelford to say that he has acknowledged the uh, the comment raised about the uh, supporting the numbers of police officers in the area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. And um, so, uh, councillors, with the amendments that have been discussed this evening, um, do you do I have your agreement to sign them off as a true record of the meeting? I, I will suffice. Okay. Thank you. I, um, we now move on to a summary of action of previous meetings. Uh, Jared, would you wish to speak to this? Thank you, Your Worship. Oh, have I done it again? I'm still on. I, thank you, Your Worship. A number of actions from last meeting, and I can share with you the, uh, the outcome of all of those. I have written to Kew Gardens on behalf of yourself, Your Worship, and have not had a reply. That's to do with the identifying the location of a holy thorn and we're st still having no correspondence from the queue, unfortunately. Um, in response to a request that the Climate Emergency and Resilience Officer has submitted and distributed the town study of Glastonbury uh, and is assessing the carbon footprint of the whole town. And that, that action has been taken. The Climate Emergency Annual Report that Melissa uh, Taylor uh, or, um, wrote is to be circulated to all councillors. In fact, that has happened. Um, signs informing there's no herbicides or pesticides used in Glastonbury by the town council is in hand and should be up very soon. I have written to Papa John's and informed that their car parking is not appropriate on the Market Cross, which extends to motorcycles, and etc., and have received a response from their uh, head office. Um, I have contacted the police to reconvene the monthly meetings to councillors Henderson and Lund and circulated to them the, uh, the response. 
and I have re inquired if the police received support from other organisations when dealing with vulnerable people and was informed there is support available which is regularly used. And finally, I have contacted Highways of Mendip to inform of the road problems at Middle Drove as reported by a member of the public at the last meeting. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Councillor Smythe and then Councillor Madhu. Worship. Um, therefore, with no result from uh, our inquiries at Kew, could we pursue with um, purchasing a holy thorn from the local supplier in order to uh, in order to uh, replant the thorn in time for the Queen's Jubilee? This is replant the thorn on Wirral Hill. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor McDougall. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Thank you. I, I totally agree with, with your proposal to do that, I, but I do ho hope that, the, that, Gerard, you will continue to try and contact Q to see if we can find some of the original tree. That would be most useful. Thank you. So uh, we now move on to receive a report from Sergeant Nancy. Lovely to see you here. So I'm not going with any, any other agenda other than to deliver the report, and obviously I'll take any questions at the end. And I will um, address your concern as well very shortly. Okay, so this is what the team have been up to over the last few weeks. Uh, we've seen an increase of the number of organised um, beggings in the town, and that's similar across Wells and Street. We operate a system where anyone caught begging is warned twice before an arrest is considered. We issue a letter both in... English and their native language, signposting, funny enough, to the Elim Centre and other agencies where they can get support and get themselves away from um, off the streets. So if anyone is seen arrested for begging, the chances are that there's been the offer of support several times before we have to take action and criminalise these people for doing it. Okay. Um, a female cyclist was a victim of an assault by mail on the outskirts of Glastonbury. This does appear to be an isolated incident and is still under investigation. The neighbourhood team have increased patrols in the area and have been in regular contact with the victim to provide some reassurance. We seized a vehicle from the town centre for having no valid tax. Um, it was, uh, a vehicle has been issued a section 9 notice, sorry, section 59 notice, which if nobody is not aware, it's like a warning to a driver or a vehicle that if it's being driven in an antisocial way, we can seize either the vehicle they're in or, or, or the vehicle itself. So if it's the vehicle's been seen twice with two different drivers, we can seize that, that vehicle. Um, following an instance, ASB, three further warning ASB letters have been issued to those involved in the high street, two further ones in the marketplace. Uh, the team attended a community engagement event, book fair, the Abbey House. It's very busy with local residents, conversations surrounding caravans, evictions, illegal parking, neighbourhood watch, the PSP, COVID regulations, anti-vaccination deba uh, debates, anti-social behaviour and much more. And we deemed it a very positive engagement event. Um, moving towards out of the, the pandemic is something I want to try and increase more, more visibility, more engagement events in and around the town. Um, so hopefully you'll see the team a lot more. Um, we've recommenced our ASB patrols with Mendip District Council in the town centre. This is to jointly to tackle um, any anti-social behaviour and to ensure people are aware of the public, the PSPO, um, which makes the town a restricted drinking zone, and they'll continue on a fortnightly basis. Uh, two males were arrested on the high street in Glastonbury following an assault outside the co-op. Both males have been released under investigation whilst inquiries continue. Uh, the team have been assessing a mental health outreach team, locating a vulnerable female in crisis. Uh, the female is now safe and well and receiving the help that she needs. Um, and the two PCSOs have been liaising with Mendip District Council to obtain further signs to clarify the rules in St John's Churchyard. And we're meeting with the church to try and work out ways of supporting each other in tackling the ASB in the forthcoming summer months. And uh, come and meet us sessions were held at Morrison's Cafe and the Tin Pot Pasty. The next session will be 11 to 12 on Wednesday, the 16th of March. And Morrison's Cafe um, between 10 and 11 on the 23rd of March at the Winking Turtle. To address the concerns about the meeting, staffing recently on the team has been challenging to say the very least, and I'm struggling to maintain business as usual, let alone any of the meetings. So I take your point that actually meeting with a key stakeholders such as the town council is critical, but I have to balance that up against delivering service wider. Okay, so I've had to bring in officers from the street team and the Wales team just to cover um, business as usual. As you say, the election is forthcoming, which fortuitously, I'm told, my staffing issues 
should be resolved by May. Okay, so hopefully, come the new town council, the matter will be resolved. And actually, I think what I would like to do is speak with the new town council to see what sort of communication they'd like with the police so it's consistent. And any meetings that do happen, I don't want to double up. So if, if the meeting with the clerk that, that I have, I don't want to double up with information that the meeting that the team have with the town council because that would be a waste of time. It waste everybody's time, won't it? So I think it's a, it would be sensible at that point to sort of pause at all meetings and decide how communication with the town council needs to look going forward. Um, and on that note, I would like to thank the town council for the support over the last... Um, I've been in post nearly two years now, and, you know, you've been brilliant and supporting my team and I just want to thank everyone especially the town clerk and, and the mayor it's been a challenging two years I think for everybody it's certainly the most challenging two years I've seen in 20 years of policing in terms of how we're delivering it and, and public confidence and it's and, and we, we, hopefully we're coming out the other way and we can all work together to police Glastonbury the way that the town would like it policed and keep it safe I've been here before I've spoken before you know I'm passionate about the type of Glastonbury I'd like to deliver and I hope we can deliver that with a new with the new town council as well. Well, thank you, yeah. Simon. And yeah. I, I'm sure the rest of the councillors will agree with me that you have led a very brilliant team here, a, a team that understand Glastonbury, and that's so vital. And thank you so much for all that you've done. May I may I just say uh, before I ask councillors whether there are any questions for you that um, we may have. Uh, an issue around Beltane in which we we attempted to try and get a road closure. If you recall, two years ago, three years ago, I can't remember now, it's the lockdown seems such a long time. The, the popularity of the Beltane event has increased and increased quite rightly. But what it means is that the High Street and Magdalene Street are full, literally full of people. You can't move. We tried to get a road closure with Mendip and they refused it. And so I need to alert the police that, unfortunately, we haven't got a road closure for Beltane, but I imagine the town will be absolutely heaving. I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm alive to it. I've already had preliminary meetings about what we're going to do. Of, of course, the issue is that, that no one owns it. You know, no, no one's sort of stepping up as necessarily as, as an organiser, which is, which, is, which is a challenge, because clearly the, the police haven't got the resources to, to own it and, and organise such a big event. Um, as is similar to other events that are held in Glastonbury. You, such you as, may as well ask who organises Christmas. Exactly, and, and the solstice as well, yeah. as, as a similar event. So whilst I'm alive to it, I've had preliminary meetings um, and we will have further meetings going forward just to see how it looks. Uh, we, we, there will be um, forward-looking intelligence, as there is to every single event in Glastonbury, just to see how many people there is likely to turn out and we will have to staff it accordingly. That's all I Thank can. You, Simon. That's all. That's all I can say. I'm anticipating it being a, a peaceful event. It's, oh I'm, yes, I'm, I'm led to believe it's, it's just the numbers yes. that will be the risk rather than we, the, the crime. What my concern is that I witnessed a bus trying to drive through a packed high street, and the bus driver not necessarily being quite wise to what was going on, and uh, other members of the public driving cars trying to get through the high street when absolutely was packed from side to side, and it, it, there was. You know, that was a surprise to everyone who was there, but I anticipate it's going to be just as popular this year, if not more so. Maybe we'll look at the issue of communication to the wider public more towards the time in terms of when it's happening and how we're going to get that out there. Thank you. So I now have a number of councillors who wish to, to ask you questions. Councillor Cottle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, one, I, I, can, I seem to recall somewhere that the town council were asked, in maybe in a jokingly way, to take responsibility for uh, Beltane. I seem to, somewhere in the back of my memory that they were asked to be the uh, be the responsible authority, but uh, I don't think that was going to happen. Now, my, my, now my real question, which is quite serious, really, uh, due to the work that's being done at the tour at this moment in time, uh, when we get to Beltane and the road is single file, now my biggest fear is that you will be occupied here and in the high street. The area of Wick Hollow, Stone Down, uh, is such along where uh, some people in my ward live, and other areas, other lanes around there are liable to be packed with uh, unauthorised parking. 
Uh, I would like to think that you will be doing a, a, a sweep on a regular, regular sort of thing. So all the, all the way down in where I live, Old Wells Road. Yeah, so the work of the My Agency Group is, is ongoing and I'll be keen for that to continue into the future. Part of that was obviously to look at Stone Down and, and, the, and the traffic around that as well yeah. as other areas in, in, in the town. There's all of them. Yeah. Um, so the, the issue was always, um, to, to boil it down, what constitutes an obstruction in terms of us being able to use our police powers. Mm -hmm. And you know, when one particular officer goes, it could be obstruction, one, one doesn't. By, by us narrowing it down, though it would cause an absolute obstruction and it'll be give us a lot it'd be a lot easier for us to use our police powers in order to remove vehicles to keep that particular bit of road network flowing okay i can't comment on what's been agreed uh, councillor lindsay mcdougall so um i'd be interested to know whether you were able to obtain a, an arrest for the incident in cinnamon lane there was an we go. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Council, you the whole cinnamon actually contacted the Order, please, Chair. It's not in the environment. It's not in there, but thank you for doing that job. Yes, what he actually did was wrong. Thanks to the police, but my heart takes that out of that environment. So, can... So, thank you. I'm afraid I do need to keep the meeting going. We've got quite a lot to get through. Councillor Madhu, I think you've inadvertently turned off your microphone. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, am I right in thinking that Beltane coincides with the road run? It does. Well, isn't the road closure in, in place for the road run? Yeah, I think the road closure in place for the road run will, will finish before the Beltane event finishes. Ah, I see. Well, maybe it would be some way of uh, extending the road closure then, because obviously the road closure is from sort of 8 o'clock to... Yeah, the, 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 whilst we, we, we wouldn't enforce the road closure. If it's, if it's closure, it's normally done by... A, a private company, isn't it? Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor yeah. Coles. Um, the issue of begging in the yep. Hello. Doesn't say Romania. That's the only word he understands. He's got a sign there: "Hungry and Homeless." I saw him there yesterday. So. It might be, well have been one of the ones we, we've spoken to. I don't know. But we, if, if we're on duty and um, we find people to be begging, we, we deal with them as I learned in, in, in the report. Yeah, buy them a cup of coffee. I think well, we're um, going to be flying Ukrainian flag, and we need to welcome all the Ukrainians. Um, so, um, can <laughs> members of the public, I will need to respectfully ask if you could allow the council to continue our meeting. Um, I think that this highlights even more importantly the work of Elim Connect, the amazing work they do, and the police work with Elim to make sure that folk who are homeless are supported. Councillor Barney. Um, I would also like to promote the idea of the excellent work that both the food bank and the community fridge do, and that actually people who are on the street who are generally hungry um, should be directed to, to those services, but also because with the increasing um, rise in prices of everything, there are going to be many more homeless people extremely soon. And I think it's really important, Your Worship, and the police and everybody else, actually everybody is working together to direct people to the services that are on offer. And if there are really big gaps in services or lack of them, that we bring that to the council, if necessary, through emergency meetings, so that actually um, care is taken of people who need it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barnett. So if there are no more questions for Simon, thank you so much for everything you do. I was intending to stay, but unfortunately we have to go. I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay.
Right, so, councillors, uh, item six on the agenda is the Mendip District Council Public Space Protection Orders Consultation. I understand that this is before us tonight so that we, as a council, may decide to respond to the consultation <coughs> as a whole, as a, as a body. Councillors, of course, may wish to respond to this consultation individually, and I would, I would strongly advise you to do so. But tonight, we have to think about our response to this as a corporate body. Jared, would you like to speak to this? Um, yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. A very brief introduction for myself. If you recall, you um, had the opportunity to discuss, and you did, the content of the uh, paper which is now before you, and that was responded to, and from that, uh, some of the ideas that you've put forward as a council have been acknowledged and put into this paper, and you have now the opportunity to respond to the formal consultation and I do believe you have until the 20th of March to have uh, your comments back to the uh, back to the district council. Thank you, councillors. Does anybody wish to speak to this, Councillor Bishop? Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mayor. Um, I, for one, as a councillor, fully support this. Uh, adoption of the PSPO and I hope that the full town council supports it as well. Um, I would just like to give an insight into um, some residents' uh, thoughts and concern they have had to suffer for many, many years of caravans, van dwellers and uh, the disruption that some may cause. Um, basically, in particular, Tedderboard Drove, which is currently infested with over 50 caravans, the illegal encampment dwellers living along Tedderboard Drove have destroyed what was once a beautiful, tranquil country lane, once full of birdsong, wildlife, flowers. This, this lane now has been a no-go area for many, many years to the general public of Glastonbury not being able to access that safely. Um, I have been made aware that, uh, that the Environment Agency have actually had to remove some toxic soil from down there from waste or rubbish that had been burnt over a period of time. Um, we talk on this town council about cycle routes and we know what we hope will, the future will bring us. But when we live in a town that local residents cannot use for fear of dogs running around loose, feces everywhere, <laughs> um, rubbish chucked everywhere, rats everywhere, to go down there with your family for a, a cycle ride or a, a general country walk is a no-go. Now, this PSBO is only one tool that this council, or the, the Mendip, Somerset County Council and the police can use. I believe, and I've understood, and we've discussed this now on three occasions at the town council, that everybody that do reside in vans or vehicles on the roadside do have welfare support, do have welfare checks, and some may progress into uh, uh, accommodation somewhere else. Now, I am not aware of any of the welfare um, individuals that go around assessing uh, of the people that live on the roadside, go into people's houses that have to suffer this. That, that they have their own welfare to deal with as well. Okay, so I fully support this PSPO, and I would like to make a proposal that we back this fully on the town council tonight. We had one vote in the past that wasn't very good, and I do understand that vote then was 10 to 3, but we didn't have the clarity of the full PSPO. Tonight, we have the full PSPO in front of us. We need now to make a stand and make a progress 
to try and get this town back to a bit of stability and a welcome place for all. And that includes residents that reside here with their family. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Cotton. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, okay, thank you, Councillor Bishop. Uh, I have been around and conducted a, an unofficial survey of local residents of all, uh, whatever they, different uh, stratas within our community to find out their uh, their views and they seem to appear in general to have the same views as myself which is this is unfortunate it's been forced because of the action of a my very small minority of people that have, put, that have pushed this on to the councils and they are upsetting and causing issues also for which I think you have to remember not just the mental health of the people in the vans or whatever, however they choose to leave, but also the people who live in the houses. And uh, I hadn't realised just how serious it was, but it is very serious. The, 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 the mental health of the people who are living in the houses as well as the people who are living, living in the vans. So to me, the only solution which the administration at Mendip have been looking into and have worked very hard since the first day that we went there, we arrived there was to find permanent sites for people who are traveling on the road and living on the roadside to be able to go to it has not been easy it will still be pursued uh now when that's the big question when uh, claire you, you can't speak at the moment we're in full council here we're we're, you're, we're not talking to the public i'm, I'm talking to the public you can ask me a question. You can ask me a question later if you wish. Um, but the thing is, Mendip have tried diligently to purchase land. That's not been possible. Uh, but whatever authority is there, it has to happen. We cannot have people living in really substandard housing, i.e. these caravans, on the sides of the road, You've got them to Bortonsborough as well, as you've got them in uh, Kennard Drove, as I think you were pointing out, Clive. And uh, there are even still some up Torview Avenue, I believe, and elsewhere. And it's just not except, and obviously down in Avalon Plastics, just past there and other places. In the 21st century, this is not acceptable. The people have got, that they haven't got access to running water or proper toilet facilities or anything. And uh, it needs to be sorted. So I'm reluctantly, reluctantly, I'm going to support this, uh, this, this one. I can't remember exactly what you call it now. SBO. Uh, yeah, I'm going to support it. But I think that there is work to be needs to be done and you just can't go pushing people away and saying, no, you have to offer an alternative. That's the, that's the essential. It has to be there. Something's got to be there for them. So that's, that's my bit. Thank you. Councillor Munch. I'm a little bit unclear about the precise circumstances in which this order would be enacted. Can you a little bit more? Can somebody, perhaps for the sake of the public as well, just clarify precisely what circumstances dictate when it will be employed? So um, I don't know. I don't know who, because this is something that Mendip is putting forward. I'm not sure that um, I I know who can answer that question. But I will look tentatively towards a member of the cabinet, Mendip, whether or not Nick, you could answer that question. Actually, uh, Your Worship, I'm not a member of the cabinet at the moment. I'm vice chair uh -huh. of the council. Bit bit different. I'm more. It's a thing. Uh, no, I can't. I, as far as I'm, as far as I really understand, this is the the uh, the committee that Glastonbury Town Council sits on as well, and also um, 
Somerset County Council. It's not just a solely uh, amended um, district council proposition. Um, it comes from that group, the MAG group. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. I see. So, yeah. um, well, the, the member of our, there is no member of our council who sits on the um, MAG group, but our clerk does um, attend the MAG group meetings. Gerard, can you answer Councillor Much's question? I, when, when will it be? When will it be enforced? I think. Oh, I can't, don't know if I can answer that one, Your Worship. And what I can share with you is just that the, these papers have been circulated to you in hard copy three times, and you've debated them uh, twice already. Um, and uh, but I will help Councillor Much. I hope with, by reading a statement that came in the, the email, which accompanied the last paper that came to me. It says, as you are aware, many district council are considering the adoption of a public space protection order. PSPO, as part of a planned approach to help address issues relating to the volume of unauthorised encampments within Glastonbury and neighbouring areas. On behalf of Mended District Council, I am specifically consulting um, you since Glastonbury Town Council have a key relevant interest for this proposal. And the, and the email goes on describing the dates and the times, but that's broadly the, 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 the purpose of it, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Much, I would draw your attention to item 7 within the PE. SPO, which is called How a PSPO May, op may Operate in Practice. Um, councillors, I notice a number of people wish to speak. Councillor McDougall, you're next. Yes, so um, I haven't personally replied to this consultation yet. Uh, I'm still listening to residents uh, um, trying to work out um, how to respond to it. But I acknowledge it's an extremely difficult situation. Um, it would have been ideal to have a site lined up before we take uh, a blunt instrument, I would describe this to be a blunt instrument, to address this problem. Uh, it's not going to do anything for the harmony of the community to be in something like this. Um, but I do acknowledge something needs to be done. Um, the housing crisis makes this a complex problem. Um, I've, I've been uh, looking at, at trying to lobby to, to limit the amount of short-term let there is in this town. We are a tourist town, we need a lot of short-term let, but uh, there comes a point where um, it, it creates real problems for the community. There aren't places for local people to run, particularly those on low income and the young. Uh, so I am looking at that one uh, to see if anything could be done on that. Um, I do believe that, that there is a site in the pipeline, from what I understand, so I don't see why we can't wait until there is somewhere for these people to go. Yeah. Yeah. I just say, this town council owns three pieces of perfectly adequate land in this town. That's something you do have to have. So the common law drove is not suitable for, for travellers. You're always the side of the road. No, no, I, I agree. agree. You don't get a temporary emergency solution because yes. it's taking you years to find well, something that's successful. The thing is, is, this town council has limited powers to solve no, this problem. You own three pieces of land. This town council owns three pieces of land. You, you ask the allotment holders so whether can, they'd like so to. They, so they, 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 so I, I, may I say that may I say that the council understands how many pieces of land it owns and, the hammer. and um, I would ask the members of public if they would allow the councillors to debate this so that we can uh, reach some resolution Councillor Coles Thank you Your Worship I've been on a district council for 20 years I remember debating this 18, month, uh, 18 years ago as part of the multi-agency approach to finding positive solutions for non-brick and mortar encampments in Glastonbury, Mendip is currently working out plans for potential traveller sites in the area. I heard that 18 years ago. Yeah. The council has secured funding and is seeking to secure further funding. We're looking at 50 permanent and temporary pitches. That's nowhere near what we need. 50. 
there's over nearly 300 people living in caravans around here. Yeah. And I'd like to point out, I pointed this out before, there is a traveller's site put up down Western Zoyland. 18 pitches. There, there is a fee for pitching your, your caravan or your van. Within less than three months, it was totally wrecked, including toilets and shower rooms. It's gone. And then those people who live down in Western Zoyland, they moved in, in this area. Uh, I, I've got no time for this um, uh, amendment, what they've been saying here. Because you know, as far as I know, we've been discussing this for years and years. Amend it. Thank you, Your Worship. Mm. Previous, you, I'd just like to add, previous right, administration. So, councillors, uh, I know Councillor do you wish to come back. Do, do remember our standing order around uh, a right of reply. So it is a right of reply. I understand that the Western Zoyland site uh, was allocated to two different sets of communities who don't get on. So it wasn't well managed. Uh, Councillor Serena Rowney do. Oh, they can't live next to one another. So that's just a poor excuse. Uh, this is, that's what I was... Not Can I ask members of the public to respect the council? I have chaired this council three successive years and I'm loath to have to use this for the first time tonight when we're trying to discuss this. I really deplore having a hammer here, but please, could members of the public be respectful of council? We need to debate this between ourselves to make a decision. I understand your thoughts around the areas of land that we own and also understand your frustrations around the situation. Councillor Serena Roney Dougal. Thank you. So I'm aware that this has come from the multi agency group. It has not come from Glastonbury Town Council. I'm also aware that the numbers they're talking about increased after lockdown. The problem we're having at the moment is directly due to the pandemic. The numbers of caravans and van dwellers have increased, and you can look at these numbers, over the pandemic. The festival season is about to start again. A lot of people living in vans and caravans will be servicing the festivals. They will be moving on to work, as they have always done over the years at the different festivals. What this is doing is shutting the stable door too late. It is making homelessness illegal. It is making somebody who wants to stay overnight in a van illegal. They're not staying overnight. Just a minute. We know. Can you from the general public? If the general public wish to have a debate about this, please could you do this outside of the chamber? Um, the councillor is speaking, and I, I, I will unfortunately have to close the meeting if we, and we will have then no resolution if we are unable to act as a council. Councillor Serena Rowan Dougal. We know that people who live on the margins of society are always the first to be demonised. We know that people who are on the edge in the last century in Europe were more than demonised. They were put into concentration camps. This is a similar sort of move. We must look after the people at the margins of society, not demonise them. Yeah, to move yeah. somebody on because they are living overnight in a van, which is what this is saying, if you read the document, it's not just for the people who are permanently living in vans, it's for anybody who is staying overnight in a van. It's a too heavy sledgehammer. Yeah. The solution is to find transit and permanent sites for van dwellers. That is the solution. This is not a solution. This is a sledgehammer to hit the poor. This is a sledgehammer to demonise those on the margins of society. It is not the correct way for a democratic, fair, reasonable culture to live with. I cannot live with the fact that these people are being demonised. 
just because they are unable to afford to live in overpriced rented accommodation, of which there is very, very little. It's only going to get worse, this, this problem, as climate change gets worse and places get flooded and there are more refugees or whatever reason. This is something that we are going to have to really work to find a fair and responsible and kind and compassionate solution. Yeah. We are all human beings, whether we're living by the side of the road or we're living in bricks and mortars. We need to look after each other. We are all people's brothers and children and sons and daughters and mothers, and we need to care for each other as human beings. That's what I want us to do. This does not care for people. This demonizes people. And I, I, I fully oppose it at every level. Councillor Smythe. Furthermore, I see any, all the uh, proposals within this are already covered under English law. Antisocial behaviour, um, parking on double yellow lines, everything in this paper is covered under English law. And as my colleague said, there is no need whatsoever to demonise a certain section of society. We're all under the same laws and the laws apply to everybody. Those laws exist for a reason and we uphold and agree to abide by those laws. Therefore, this is absolutely not necessary. Councillor McDougall, are you replying to um, a point made? Because you've already spoken. I'm trying to keep this to standing orders. <laughs> um, I would say that this is a major problem in my ward, so I wonder if I can speak again. <laughs> Um, well, would you would you just wait? Yes, this has been cleared. Mine remains problem. Uh, okay. Well, Councillor, please speak speak again. Um, I would say that the number of police has been reduced drastically by central government, and if you don't have police visible, um, then you can expect there to be problems. You know, uh, on the high street. In, in the caravans, anywhere. There are always going to be bad apples about. Uh, we, we do need more police visible. You know, I mean, that's what I'd like to add. Thank you. Councillor um, Barnett. Thank you, Your Worship. I would really like to um, show my appreciation to Councillor Rony Dougal for saying what she said. Much of it was what I was going to say, so I appreciate that. But I would, um, because there are so many different points, and everybody has a point of view, and everybody needs respecting. And part of this situation is because there has been a lack of respect. In some situations, both from residents in the town and from uh, some of the people traveling and I know that from uh, having worked with uh, issues to do with homelessness since I was 19 which is now a very long time ago um, I would like to actually ask a situation when council elation our, one of our county councillors has been speaking with us about the work that she and others, and she's also a Mendip councillor, had been doing to try and find sites for um, park up both temporary and permanent. Um, negotiations would start with people owning pieces of land, but directly that it was discovered what the land was going to be used for the negotiations were ceased by the landowner. On one level, I can really appreciate that there's anxieties if you're a landowner in how it may be used by people who may be using or leasing or purchasing the land for a particular purpose. 
But what I would ask of people who own land on this, what is a really small island, we do, we've do. we already virtually run out of space for building bricks and mortar houses within the development area, is that because this is such a needed thing that many of the people who are traveling, who are living in vans, either because they choose a lifestyle or because they wish to visit here as questers and pilgrims, <coughs> that we actually ask from this council for people owning land that might be potential for use in this way should actually reconsider their thoughts and feelings about how this could be put to good use in this situation. As Councillor Rooney Deagle says, we're all human beings, we're all equal, but many people are not being treated as equal at the moment and people are running on fear and anxiety rather than respect and love. And I respect and love this land and this place hugely, which is why I moved here over 40 years ago. And I would ask those who own suitable land to really consider deeply in their hearts about if there's not some space that can be used. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, this town council represents the whole of the community in Glastonbury, both the residents that live in bricks and mortar and the uh, residents that live on the roadside in vans and caravans. And I've been on this council for 11 years and we've been debating this problem all the time I've been here. It was a problem before I even sat on the council. And we have gone to Mendip Council and Somerset County Council and the police and Elim and all the other agencies and we've asked them for help. And this is kind of the thing that's come back to us. It's a, it's a, it's a document that's been thrashed out for many years and it's come back in several different forms. And it's important to realise this is only one part of the attempted solution to this massive problem. We all know that we need a permanent and uh, some transit sites. And it's not just as easy as if Glastonbury's got land, we can put it where we want. That is not the case or else we would have done it. Yeah, but this is a temporary solution. Like it's not, we don't want a temporary solution. We don't want a temporary solution. Anyway. So land is not to be owned, it's a living organism and we all are here to love and travel on it. Thank you for that, thank you. As Councillor Barnett has said, the County Council have been looking for land high and low for many, many years and it's not easy to find. But I would say that with the Towns Deal Fund coming up, one of the 12 projects involved with that is to find a traveller site, which is very important in the ongoing prosperity of Glastonbury and we take that part of the project very, very seriously. So as, as, as this is coming forward as a protection for not only the people living in the houses, but also for the people that are living in abject squalor in some cases, not through any fault of their own, but they shouldn't be having to live in that sort of situation. This is one tool of many which we are trying to solve this problem. But I also just urge you to remember that we are trying to solve this problem in a, in a sort of benevolent way. We're not, we're not coming down on people as heavy hand and compare it to what happened in Europe in the 1930s, I think is a little uh, extreme to say the least. So I think we have got to support this and I think as long as we, it can be reviewed after three years, I think if this council keeps an eye on things, we liaise with the police every month and in between the, the meetings as well, um, I'm sure we can make this work for everybody. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lund. Right, I'm wearing a mask because I've got a vulnerable colleague next to me. Um, can you all hear me? Yes? To the mic. Do that if that helps. Does that help a little bit? This document, which I'm sure that many of you won't have um, been able to see or re read, and I'm addressing my comments to the public gallery because clearly you've come, many of you have come, the reason why you're still here is because of this subject. So 
whilst we need to debate this as a council, while you're here, I think you need to be included, and that's why I'm addressing you. Now, in this document, there are a number of there are a number of phrases or sentences which leave leave open the possibilities for no action being taken. And I'm just looking at one. Um, any breach of the PSPO is an immediate criminal offence subject to there being no reasonable excuse. Now, reasonable excuse is, well, I'm sorry, but there's nowhere else to go. That's a reasonable excuse in my mind. So this document doesn't really help the situation long term unless we tackle what Councillor Henderson has just said is a permanent site or two sites. Secondly, we've been told as a town council that if we don't agree to this, we're jeopardising the future of the town deal fund. Yeah, that's what we've been told, basically. So it would be nice to know how many of you would put your hands up if you want to jeopardise the town deal fund by not having this. Oh, OK, all right. And how many want the town deal fund? What I'm saying is that's what we have been given as, as the reason why this should be passed and we should be... Yeah. That's very divisive. Councillor Henderson, you're going to have to go. 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 Councillor Henderson, you're going to
And then the, the, uh, it goes on about things like uh, if the PSPO is adopted, how widely do you believe it should be, it should believe it should it apply? Um, so thank you, that, thank you, Joe. That's enough help. Um, it's very clear to me that councillors have not looked at the questionnaire that is clearly stated on the last page of the document. The questionnaire is what we're being asked to complete. It's a 14 page document. I would like to suspend this debate here now because what's going to happen is just a divisive motion, which I can't see the council coming to some un unified agreement around, and that we should have a subcommittee, there is an emergency subcommittee to look at the questions on the questionnaire, which we're being asked to respond to, and for councillors to consider those questions between now and that meeting, and for us to debate that at the meeting, rather than making, making um, absolutely uh, irrelevant, we support this, we don't support this statement, which is not what we're being asked to do at all. Please, councillors, next time we have something as important as this on the agenda, please can you read the whole document and follow the questionnaire at the end of it. I am now moving on to the next item. Surely I've got to close it. You have no one seconding your motion, Councillor. No one seconding my motion? You didn't even put it to the table. You you put it to the table. I no did. one has seconded your motion. I'm moving on. The motion isn't to support or not support this. The motion the the, the questionnaire is what we're asked to respond to. On the agenda tonight is here to be discussed and you need to take a vote on it because it's the last time. Are you saying that you will not have a vote? This council in front of the public here to vote? And not record those votes, neither? Yeah. Have you got an action in there you're worried about? Councillor, you I'm need a seconder for a motion. Also um, motion, read the motion out, okay. I, want, I propose that this town council supports this P PSBO. Um, we can't until we vote. We can't until we vote. We can't until we vote. Councillor Barnett. Can I, uh, Your Worship, can I make yeah, exactly. a yeah, different exactly. motion that, um, as your suggestion, uh, I would like to propose that a, a committee is set up uh, to explore the questionnaire and to for people to be really, really clear, particularly because of some of the feedback that's come back, and that it meets and comes back to the next meeting with a clear um, with a clear response from councillors. So we, we can't do that because the deadline is the 20th of March. Oh. Councillors, the, the thing that we're being asked to do as a council is to respond to the questionnaire as a corporate body. Yeah, I said that. It's been out for months. Mayor, this has been out for months. Councillors have had, have had months to look at this and debate it. There's been all the town council websites. You can respond to the question yourself. Right. Yeah, but as a consultation. Would you, would you endorse a request to um, the Constitution Individually, you were asked as councillors to respond. Mm. Just after Christmas, on mm. member district council, we've had ample opportunity to discuss this. Councillor, you can respond time. to this as an individual any time you like. The consultation started in the middle of February. Yeah. We're meeting tonight to, to discuss our response to it. But councillors, the response to it isn't a vote of whether we agree with the PCSO or not. The response is what the questionnaire that we're being asked to complete is. It's a 14-page document. Are you denying the proposal I put forward have been seconded by Councillor Cole? I'm not. I'm just explaining to the Council what we're being Simple. asked to do. Make a vote. Well, um, the Council. It, there's a questionnaire. Do we support Do we support the PCSO? Is that your... Is that PCSO? Yes, that is mine. Yeah. Does this town council support this PSVO, yes or no? So, OK, before, before we move to vote, I know that Councillor Tucker wishes to speak. Thank you, Your Worship. I have been trying to get my hand up for a while. Um, first of all, can I say categorically that I don't believe for one minute we are being held to ransom over the town deal fund. I've never heard that. I think the clerk has confirmed that. So I would like the members of the public to be aware that that is not a fact. 
Can I also let you know that the Town Deal Board Glastonbury members, when we sat around this table at the inception, which was probably last May or something, made it quite clear to the officers that amended that the ta if the town deal was going to be successful, the issue of the traveller sites had to be resolved and was a top priority. And that is why there is a, there is money in the budget for the town deal fund to resolve the problem. Because we've all acknowledged that there is no way that we're going to get all the other things sorted out if we don't deal with that. The... The council have been lobbying the various people, different organisations, Mendip, County, the police, for years to try and resolve the issue of people just pitching up outside of anybody's house and, and there is nothing it would seem anybody can do about it. This is a group of work together to come up with and, and you're, you're right that a lot of this is, is already legislation which has been drawn together in, a, in one document which is called this PSPO. We have, as you have rightly said, had three months to look at and discuss this. We have. Not only have we had the opportunity to discuss it, but all the other organisations have had an opportunity to discuss it and it is their considered opinion that it's, this is necessary for all the organisations to have a document to work to, along with the need to provide some sites within the town to allow the non bricks and mortar people to reside. Because if we're all going to live in a civilised society, that's the only way that we're going to get on together, because we cannot continue chasing one another back and forth. And it's pretty obvious in this room tonight that there is a, a pretty even opinion about the fact that both sides feel the need for it to be resolved. and. So we shouldn't be fighting about it. What we should be doing is trying to find a resolution. Oh, yeah. and this, whether you like it or not, is part of the resolution because we cannot have a situation where anybody from anywhere in the, t in the country can suddenly come and pitch up in front of all the residents. On the other hand, and I think that it's been demonstrated through the lockdown, that, that there's been a huge amount of tolerance in this town. <laughs> There, is, there are more places where people could get a hot meal in this town. There, are, there, there is the, the, um, community, fridge. the community fridge. There, are, there is lots of goodwill in the town, but it is being pushed to breaking point by people who continually come. And we cannot look after everybody who turns up. There has to be a finite limit to it. So there has to be some balance. Part of the balance is, is what you've got in front of you, because the, this, is, this is just part of the solution. I think that you'd be, this, as a town council, after all that has been discussed, if you just turn this down out of hand, we would be making the wrong decision, we'd be sending the wrong decisions to the other organised, other councils and, and the police by, by turning it down, because they have put so much work into this. I don't disagree with, um, with Sue that if we wanted to answer the questions for it, <coughs> a, a subgroup SAP or those people interested could certainly answer the questions. But in principle, I think we would be wrong to just turn this down out of hand because it is not perhaps what's been described as, as sort of draconian. I think it is a measured part of a balance to make sure that this town can continue to act and sort of live in a harmonious manner. So... That's my view on it. Thank you, Councillor Much. It seems to me, in search of the clarification I've seen here, that it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, and that until we've got at least one site where people can stay, it seems premature to introduce a sledgehammer regulation. I think that, that has to be the starting point. If people misbehave, that's a different issue. Well, I, I, I was a squatter myself in the East End of London in the 80s, and I behaved very, very well. There were people who didn't, and I, I had no uh, compunction about not supporting them uh, when they misbehaved. But to everybody who stops doesn't feel right for me. I'm uncomfortable with it, partly because of my own experiences 40 years ago, and partly from what I've been listening to this evening and reading uh, several times over, actually. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I can't support it. So, councillors, just for clarity, and I, your, your motion will move forward, Councillor Bishop, because it's been seconded, so there will be a vote on it. But I would just like to ask the clerk...
to clarify why this is on the agenda tonight. Richard, this is on the agenda this evening because there's a consultation that's currently open until the 20th of March, of which individuals have been and, and councils across the whole of Mendip area have been asked to, to uh, forward their comments and thoughts to the proposals within the PSBO. Via the questionnaire? Via the questionnaire. How many pages is the questionnaire? Well, there's 14 questions in it. It's about a page and a half. So, councillors, that's what we've been asked to do. It is very, very useful, I'm sure, as there's an election coming up, to grandstand and make a vote of whether we support this or not. But that's not what this council has actually been asked to do. This council has been asked to respond to the consultation. I think it would be much better for this council to actually sit down and hammer out a response to the consultation rather than grandstand whether or not we approve of it or not, which is a divisive motion. But the motion has been placed for us, and so we have to vote on it. Councillor. Then I'll propose an amendment, Your Worship, that we actually set up a subcommittee to look at the 14 questions that we can bring back so that we can answer the questions in a sensible, measured way. Before the date. Before the date. Thank you. Councillor Lund. Would you, would you second that? I would second that proposal, Chair. So there's an, there's a member. Councillor Lund, if you wish to speak. I just want to reply to Councillor Ian Tucker on this point, because I think it is important. I would be the first person to admit if I'm wrong or ask others to identify where I've gone wrong. But Councillor Tucker's words were just recently, as he said, that officers had said the projects could not successfully go ahead or, or the, if the traveller situation was not resolved or adequately sorted. Um, turning down this um, proposal might jeopardise the town deal projects. If you'd like to just refer back to what you said and tell me again what you said earlier, I'd be happy to take that. But, but let me just tell you, we're both, we're both disagreeing with each other over a number of issues, including the town deal fund right now. So we are in opposition to each other right now. But let him say something. Councillor Tucker, we have right to reply. I thought I made it quite clear what I said. What I said was that the members of the town deal board not this town council, the members of the town deal board who sat around this table to discuss when this money first came up made it a priority that we had to resolve because if, if, if the money was going to be usefully spent, that was the top priority in the town to resolve. That, that was the statement I made and we made that resolution to the officers so it was an instruction from the board to the Mendip officers, and they have taken that on board, and that that is why there is money in the budget for that for that action. So that was exactly what I said. I just thank you, Councillor Bishop. Um, yeah, um, as I said earlier, um, three months we've known about this, and the we 14, were asked to the 14, the fourteen questions are on that are out for public debate. Ask. As the Glasby Town Council or interested party in MAG, that is why Mendit asked the Town Council for their opinion and we their view you. on the PSBO. They could do it individually, which some have done, some have not. I have done. I've done it back in January. Okay? So for three months, we've pushed it down the road again and again and again. You're now going to set up a subcommittee uh, to, 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 for, for, to, to have answers to those 14 questions will, that will not be a full agreement of the town council. It will be those people sitting on that committee and their views and their ideas, but they're for or against. So that is no different than having a vote here tonight. Councillor Bishop, a secret. Councillor Bishop, Councillor Bishop, the consultation, the document that you have in front of you is a document that has come out of consultation between statutory bodies, including Glastonbury Town Council. Originally, we were not asked to respond to the questionnaire, we were asked to comment on whether the consultation before it went public was appropriate. We put in our own amendments to the consultation and the document before you is the result of that. If you believed that you were answering a consultation at that time, you were mistaken because the consultation was not open. The consultation opened in the middle of February. 
We were asked to debate it, and we haven't. We, 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 debated, we debated it at the time, and we put forward our suggestions to the MAG group about what, it, what would be done. Now we're being asked, as a statutory body, to respond to the consultation, which is why it's on the agenda tonight. There has been an amendment proposed to the motion, first of all proposed, by Councillor Tucker, that we actually do what we've been asked to do, and that is to respond to the questions. So if we did that tonight, we'll be here until midnight, I would imagine. I think that needs another meeting. It'll be a meeting that'll be swift, and as many councillors who wish to put their position forward, if that should turn up to that meeting. If you can't turn up to that meeting, we'll try and get your information some other way. But it has to be uh, something that the whole council can agree with, not a device, not something that divides us, but something that brings us together to make a response. If we can't do that, if we can't come up with a response that we're all happy with, we should not be replying as a statutory body. So, councillors, the, the amendment has been put forward by Councillor Tucker that we try to answer those questions as a council and come to some resolution around that. It's been seconded by Councillor Barnett. We need to vote on whether or not we approve of the amendment. Are you voting, Councillor, or do you wish to speak um, to this? I've already asked to speak. Thank you, Councillor Cottle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my situation on this is I'm a bit flabbergasted, to be honest with you, about all the commotion here. But what I wanted to point out to Councillor Much is if you lived in Cinema Lane, mate, you would know that a lot of them are antisocial and uh, don't well, play by well, rules. And there are a good one. Now, hold on. Here's what I'm saying. There are good people there as well, but there are a small minority, as there are everywhere, that don't play by the rules, make people's lives a very unhappy, and they've even had a go at me. Okay. Okay. So don't defend them, not those particular ones. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Thank you. Councillor McDougall, were you voting no, or no, wishing to speak? I wanted to ensure that a date was set today for this special meeting. So Thank you. We, we, sure we, we can all we, Well, we need to vote on it first. Councillor Smythe. Is there a possibility that we can extend the deadline on the 20th of March? Because mm -hmm. members of the public haven't had a chance to read this either. Yeah. It's only the eighth. Uh, I'm look to the clock. It's it's a district-wide consultation. I doubt very much the extension would be permitted uh, for for you know uh, um, comments beyond the 20th of March. Uh, in response, I know you wish to go to a vote in a moment, Chair, but if in response to when it might be a, a prudent time to have a discussion, it could be immediately after the planning meeting next Tuesday. Councillors, I, I would suggest that that is something we consider once we have voted on the whether the amendment should be taken forward and then on whichever is a substantive motion. So, councillors, the amendment has been proposed. I would like to see all of those in favour of the amendment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I note that even the seconder of the original motion voted for that. And any against? And any against? One. Any abstentions? So, councillors, we voted to support the amendment. So now we need to, sub to vote on the amendment as a substantive motion. The amendment is that we meet to actually do what we've been asked to do, which is to respond to the consultation on the questionnaire. The clerk has said that we can do that on? Uh, the 15th of March. On the 15th of March. So that's next week's councillors. That gives us time to get this done before the end of the consultation. At what time? Uh, your, your planning committee, your, your worship, is at seven o'clock. Um, I would imagine it's going to be immediately after that, but not before. <laughs> So any councillors who are not a member of the planning committee, please turn up around about 8 o'clock. I'm sure you'll be able to take part. I would advise all councillors to be there. Councillors, we now vote on that substantive motion to meet after the planning committee meeting to work out our response to the consultation as we are being requested to do by the MAG group. All those in favour? Thank 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, Richard. All those against? Mm -hmm. One. Thank you, Richard. Any abstentions? Thank you, councillors. We now move on to the next item, which is to receive and consider the resolutions of the Planning Committee, Property and Assets Committee and Youth Provision Committee. These are tabled before you. Councillors, as time is moving on, are, are these noted? Yes. Yeah. Your Worship, um, I know time's against you and you wanted to move on quickly, but there's one, there's one item in the Property and Assets Committee agenda, uh, not agenda, beg your pardon, um, resolutions that I wish to draw your attention to. Um, and it's the fifth bullet point down, um, and we debated this, or you debated it, long and hard at the last Property and Assets Committee meeting, as about the incorporation of St Dunstan's House into the Town Hall, treating the two facilities as one venue, yes. which is, is a, a, a major item as part of the Town Deal Fund applications. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. Councillors, is there... Uh, can we take these as noted, or is there anything else that the councillor wishes to raise? Councillor Barnett? Um, I'd just like to raise uh, one of the items under the youth provision, um, which is that we did uh, meet Councillor uh, uh, Jane, um, Jane Copsgate from the YMCA Brunel Group came and presented and informed about the property that they've purchased in Street Road uh, with the intention of providing accommodation for young people. This is intensely, uh, intensive support accommodation and it will be up to five young people. They, I'm reporting, I'm drawing your attention to this because originally Ms. Cos Cosps Cop State was going to come to the town council meeting and wasn't able to do that. So I wanted councillors to know. I have invited her uh, that we ask her to come and speak to us once they're up and going so that all councillors are fully informed. Thank you very much. So, councillors, are we noted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor, did you wish to speak? Councillor, right now. So we now move on to item eight, which is the motion. Now, um, Councillor Keery is unable to be with us tonight, so I'm imagining, Councillor Tucker, as a seconder, you are now a proposer. Well, we have discussed this, Your Worship. I think, A, in the view of the time of the evening and the fact that Councillor Keery is particularly keen to get this through, can we withdraw it and put it on the next agenda? I accept the withdrawal and look forward to it being on the next agenda. So we, we now receive County Council reports. We have a written report from Council Napa. Thank you very much. Council Napa, have you anything you wish to add? I must say how I approve of your shirt and tie combination. I want to uh, digest from the last uh, hour, I think. Um, having said that, I've, I've tendered my uh, report and I'm here to answer questions. Any questions for the Councillor? Councillor Cottle. Yeah, thank you. Just something I just remembered now. I've already informed Councillor Lyson. Uh, we still have difficulties down at Turston Road. Uh, Mrs Cohen is still um, having issues. If you could sort of go through the routine again, Terry, please. I certainly will do, Councillor Cottle. Thank you. Uh, I've not seen uh, uh, Mr Cohen or Mrs Cohen for a little while, so... Um, I will expect a bit of an ear bashing, I guess. Well, when the next time you see them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Tucker. Mm -hmm. uh, again, can we can we thank the county council for starting to make some efforts around Stone Down? Uh, there is a concern by some of the locals that the banks are particularly high. They have, and I don't know whether they've had an opportunity to go up for them. But indeed, it, there is this sort of consideration that the stones are made to or a bar and a bank not high enough to deter people from just driving up over. So I can give you a ring tomorrow. And yeah, and perhaps we can go another day, Terry. Yeah, we'll do. Good engagement. We've got another two weeks of road closure. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Barnett. Um, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Councillors, could we please respect the Councillor speaking? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Terry, for your report. And I see on it that you have that the County Council wishes to achieve a carbon zero 
uh, Somerset by uh, 2030. I wonder whether there's so far been any uh, interim reports about how this is progressing um, and if the county is likely to meet this target, particularly as we're going into unitary. Thank you. Uh, there has been, um, <coughs> excuse me, there has been um, some, some interim uh, um, uh, reports on, on, on this, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't give them to you offhand, but I, I, hopefully I can give them, uh, I can give you some written answers. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions for the councillor? Well, Terry, thank you so much uh, for being can here. Can I just comment on one of these things? Um, uh, it says residence parking permits, Wells Road. Yes. <clears throat> um, unbeknowing to Liz and myself, um, that uh, it has been extended. Uh, and I think that this is where we have a little bit of a problem. Um, but, but I believe, uh, I had an email tonight at about, um, I don't know, about half five, I think it was, six o'clock, uh, that, that it is um, enforceable. Um, but I, 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 like I said, I, I, I read it, but um, I, I was um, possibly in the shower at the same time. But, um, but th there is a problem there, but it has been ex extended, which Liz and I were, were not aware of. But I'm speaking to Liz in the morning uh, to find out what we're going to do about it. Thank you, Councillor. I, I approve of your diligence of risking elocu electrocution in the shower, reading your mobile phone at the same time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Your Worship, if I may. Councillor Cook. Um, Terry, I noticed there's been some double yellow lines put in Wales Road. Um, it's pretty Liz is not here. I've been pestering her for two years now to put double yellow lines outside St. Dunstan School where people park and you cannot see if you're driving out Austin Road and Underwood Road if there's vehicles parked there. There's been several accidents there actually. I wonder why they didn't do that when they put the, the lines in Wells Road and not further by the, up, a bit further by the school. Um, no, that. All I know is that you say you've been pestering Liz for two years. Um, all I can tell you is that you've been pestering me for about ten. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> As clarification, the double yellow lines on Wells Road are part of this uh, residence parking because obviously, if you have residence parking on one side, you don't want everybody else suddenly parking on the other side of the road. So they put double yellow lines on the opposing side just to make sure that the, the problem isn't just moved across the road and then, then you'd have cars parked on both sides of the road. Um, this residence parking was applied for quite a long time ago, and I think that. Although Liz was in agreement and got it pushed through county, it, it lapsed. Because it took so long for the county to impose it, it lapsed and it was therefore put on the back burner. Um, but then without Liz or Terry knowing, suddenly the signs went up saying residence parking only. And when I asked Liz, oh, this is back on then, she didn't know anything about it. So consequently, and also, as Terry said, as far as I was aware, it was just the amount of residents on the bank between 3 and 19 or yeah. 21 had applied for this. But now it's extended past St Edmunds Road a bit further down. So whether those other people have been consulted and, because I think you need the approval of all residents before you're allowed to do it. Whether they've been consulted, I think needs to be kind of looked into before, because I don't think they've actually had a letter saying it's up and running, but obviously wheels are turning and things are happening. So I would imagine there's going to be letters going out at some point that the residents have got to apply for permits. And whether the people down beyond St Edmunds Road know that they're going to have to do that is needs to be sorted out. Can That's the recommendation that Liz and I will be uh, talking about in the morning. All right, thank you. Councillor, does that answer your, your query or would you like this council to do something as well? Well, I think it's a county council issue and I think as long as they're aware that the people beyond St Edmunds Road might want to be either consulted, they might not even want it, in which case the signs saying resident parking only need to be moved back to where they should be outside um, Chindit. Yeah, that's where it should uh, stop. But also, also, I believe that the wording on the, on the signs are wrong because it should say um, uh, Monday to Sunday. Because I, I, oh, sure. they, were, they were covered up by the policy and that's obviously been ripped off. So they're not... We saw it quickly this evening. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Smythe. Um, 
further to this, there's um, problems in that the uh, residents from Manor House Road up to um, St Dunstan's School, I've spoken to some of them, they're concerned that the problem will be shifted and, and I think they would like to have parking permits as well, because otherwise they'll, they feel their parking space will be taken up by non-residents as the problem's shifted. Uh, secondly, there are, as you're coming out Manor House Road into Wells Road, uh, if you're turning right, the, 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 uh, there's a, your view is obstructed by cars permanently parked within about 10 or 15 yards of the entrance. Uh, and I know this because I, I turn there very often. And it's a potential accident waiting to happen. So the double yellow lines need to be extended on that side of Wells Road as you're turning it out of Manor House Road. The double yellow lines coming out of Manor House Road I've, I've seen it myself. It, it's, uh, it, it's a very blind, uh, blind exit, um, and uh, there is very often uh, a, a high-sided vehicle parked on on that on that junction or on the um, on on the, the side of that junction. Um, but um, the WL lines, I'm not sure we can extend them because they are to the uh, to, to, to what, what they should be. Um, I think it's what is it, 20, 20 odd yards, uh, 20 feet, uh, 25 feet, something like that from the junction. But I know that that, that is the um, uh, th th there is a big problem there. But I'm not sure what we can do about it. I'd just like to say that the, it's due to the camber of the road and the mm -hmm. fact that you're on a hill. Yeah. That's and, the and and of course that curve. Yeah. I, I've I've come across that many many times before. And like I say, the the, the high sided vehicle which parks there. Is not helping uh, aiding that uh, that access at all. Thank you. Any other questions for Councillor Napper? Councillor Napper, thank you so much. I, you may wish to um, wait because I, I um, Gerard, the town clerk, is going to read the report from Councillor Lyshen. She's asked us if we can listen to her report, and there may be some questions that come out of that. Are you happy to to respond to those, Councillor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councillors, could we? Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Your Worship. This is the, an email I received this evening um, from Councillor Lislation, who is unfortunately unable to be here because he's not well. Residents parking in Wells Road. This has been extended further along Wells Road due to additional residents' requests. One resident has objected to the extension of the scheme. The signs are up, but the times are wrong, so new overlays will be put on those signs with the correct times which should read Monday to Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. The lining is outstanding. That is being chased with the contractor. The traffic regulation order has been redrafted to include the extended part and will be, re and be advertised soon. Residents will be able to purchase permits as soon as the scheme is fully implemented. NSL staff for parking enforcement. Body-worn cameras have been trialled in Glastonbury and are now being ordered for all NSL staff. Training follows for all staff across Somerset and the body-worn camera should be in use by the end of this month. The Public Space Protection Order. This is part of the work of the multi-agency group. It is not part of the town deal and no money from the town deal is being used to run the consultation or any other part of the PSPO proposal. All residents are encouraged to take part in the public consultation, please. Traveller sites. As part of the multi-agency group and the town deal enabling project, the provision of traveller sites or sites is being actively progressed by officers across county and Mendip. They are working with a number of groups and progressing on one site currently. It has not been possible to purchase any privately owned land, so the only land able to be considered is that owned by Somerset County Council or Mendip District Council. Stone Down Lane. The work has started. I don't yet have confirmation of how much more work is to be completed within the three-week road closure period. Bretano Road. The consultation is closed. I have had one meeting with officers to discuss the concerns of residents who are worried about the possible one-way system within the estate, particularly if farm vehicles need to reach the gates at the far end of Breton No Road. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Are there any questions that come out of that that perhaps you would like Councillor Napper to, to consider? Councillor? Oh, sorry, Terry. It's okay. It's okay. No. 
Thank you. So um, thank you very much, Councillor Napa, for being here. And thank you, Joe, for reading this report. And Liz, if you're watching, thank you for your report. We now move on to district council reports. Uh, we start with Councillor McDougall. Thank you very much for providing us with the written report. Do you have anything you wish to add? No. Any, uh, I think what we'll do is questions for the district councillors on mass at the end. Uh, Councillor Henson, have you? Any and, Chair, um, I haven't uh, submitted a written report simply because the only uh, activity I've had at Mendip since the last meeting was to um, attend the quarterly meeting of the full council. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Cotton. Yeah, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Well, I was going to go through a whole load of stuff that's on my telephone, but I won't bother because we're late on time. So I'll hit to the point. Uh, as you're aware, I chaired the, uh, the full meeting uh, that we had recently, Mendit, which I will add, I managed to get done by 10 o'clock. And within the time, and it was a huge agenda. It so certainly was. Get, get fit, get, use, use that thing. Um, right, that was that one. Then the other thing was, I was should stress while we're here uh, is that the budget it meant it was set and it maintains services and it keeps things on a smooth run it's sustainable and your income your income tax your uh, council tax will go up five pound from mend it 10p a week which i don't think is gonna break anybody's bank and that'll do that's okay but if you want a full rundown on everything just give me a shout and I will email it to you, OK? Because I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking I don't want to be here to midnight. Thank you very much, okay. councillors. I also attended a full council meeting at Mendip and it was so excellently chaired. What can I say? Um, I, today I have attended the AGM of the Somerset uh, Drainage Board Consortium, which is very interesting. They had a councillor from North Somerset Council who was Councillor Bridget Petty, and she is leading on their environmental uh, emergency and climate emergency work. She delivered an excellent presentation to the Drainage Board Consortium on the impact of climate emergency and um, ways that they, they might try to mitigate it. What I would say is that North Somerset Council are extremely blessed with this councillor who is leading on their work to reduce their carbon emissions, which they have reduced by 42% over the last three years. So they're doing rather well than we are, but we're two years behind them. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a quick uh, nod to Nick. Uh, yeah, very entertaining meeting, Nick. Well done. But just to reiterate, we do need to know about the Elam Centre, and we need to know that pretty damn quick. So we're going to get that sorted tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'll do, Steve. I will uh, be on that tomorrow morning, first thing, and or maybe even tonight if I get home in time. I'll send the emails out. I would have WhatsApp somebody and found out. Let Gerard know. Let uh, Gerard know, and then he can spread it around because it's quite serious. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Tucker. Well, Your Worship, I just wonder whether we ought to back that up with a with a with a motion or, or something or other from this table just to let let it know. Um, Concerned, we That's are. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Second that, yeah. sure. We shouldn't just allow it to, to just drift. No, no, I, mean, right. it, I think that if we were, and hopefully we would be unanimous in deploring the action, mm -hmm. the way it's gone about, and that we, we really want answers to how the, the gap's going to be filled. Thank you. So, Councillor Tucker has proposed that. I think I heard Councillor White second that motion. And, um, I seconded it. Dougal, I think. Oh, right. Oh, I, they, they both told at the same time. I seconded it. Uh, like it. We vote. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a cabinet meeting last night, Nick, wasn't it? Was that it decision was. taken at that, that meeting then? No, this had been taken before that okay. because All right. I was approached by a member of the service about um, a week and a half ago. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but it was news to me. So, councillors, um, so seconded by Councillor Serena, <laughs> uh, Councillor Mac Lindsay McDougall, sorry, um, that we write to Mendip Cabinet 
and the leader, the leader of the, the, leader council, of the council, Chief Exec, Chief Exec and express um, our concerns around what appears so, um, to be the termination of the rough sweeping service uh, with Elim, within Elim Connect and our concerns that this may have a, a, a negative impact on the people who use the service and also that we're unclear about what they propose to do in, in relation to the service continuing in some way. And there, there were some concerns about that. Does that sound about right? Um, I, I, I thank you, Your Worship. I would like to add that the whole of the, sorry, cabinet is copied into the, to what we send. So it's not just going to one or two people. Thank you. Joe, do you think you have the motion written down? Yeah, I'll try, Your Worship. Um, proposed by Councillor Tucker, seconded by Councillor McDougall, that Glasgow Town Council is opposed to the termination of the service provided by Elim. I think we need to say rough, rough sleeping service. Okay. You would all, excuse me, you would also want to know uh, what is coming in yeah. its place, what's taking yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Said that, yeah. and I'm pretty sure that nobody would make a decision like that without there was something in its place, because I know, I just know, that the, the portfolio holders, all three of them who deal with that, that's must not be very concerned. That's not what Tom that's not no. what we've said. No. Yeah. Councillor McDougall. No, it's, it, it, it's, it, the, the email I received said it was going to be taken in-house. Yeah. And um, the, supported by a few of these. Tom, who came, said that there's already a vacancy that hasn't been filled for months. Yeah. Exactly. So it's our concerns about how it's going yes. to be continued. Yeah. So, Council, anyone wish to speak against the motion? Can I have those show of hands, all those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, unanimous. Thank you. So um, we now move to receive the budget monitoring report. That this was tabled. May I congratulate the responsible finance officer yet again for an excellent set of notes. <coughs> Councillors, any observations from the budget monitoring report? Uh, Councillor Serena Rooney do um, Yes, I, I mentioned it uh, last month um, and I'll mention it again but it looks like the rents from the common law lot and still have not been paid. Uh, could you could you alert uh, us to so the So I have informed the Treasurer that they need to be paid. Um, um, we have a meeting in a couple of weeks' time. I'm sure it does, has happened. Um, he is aware. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, yeah, there is one. Um, item seven. Glassbury um, Community Centre next door. I've now rented the upstairs office space in St Dunstan's house. This is an unbudgeted income. Do you know how much we're going to get for that, Cheryl? Six thousand. Oh, where's, where's, where's your figures? Where's your figures? Back on. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, it's a job. Oh, oh, right. Councillors, do are we happy to to note the budget monitoring report? Is that what? Aye. I... And then we now move on to the schedule of payments. And this is for approval. Are there any comments? Councillor Barnett. Thank you. Um, I have a, a question. Um, 1332, um, six Douglas firs. Could I ask where they're being, where they have been planted? Ten Douglas firs. Mm. Sorry? Ten Douglas firs. Mm. Mm. Yes, you were in response to that question. Um, we planted more cricket bat willows on land at Kirby's Field than we had anticipated we were going to. It was 140 that went in, not 120. Um, but because they're in neat rows, there was a triangle of land at the very far end that was basically fallow. So I purchased 10 Douglas fir Christmas trees in anticipation that come 30 years' time, we'd be saving ourselves buying some trees. So. They grow fast. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Lund. 
Um, gosh. Well, having uh, been um, passed in before you in the Forestry Commission, I can tell you that Douglas fir prefer well drained gravel and usually quite well drained sandy soils. So, in the next, what, what do we pr predict? In the next 10 years, the flooding will increase and will probably mean that fields like that will be underwater. So. It, uh, I think that's a, a good point to note. Um, I'm sure that uh, many other trees will also be impacted, but we should be mindful of the um, rising water levels whenever we're doing something. Councillors, are there any other comments? Mm -hmm. Do I have your agreement to sign these off? Aye. Aye. Thank you. While I'm doing that, um, may I ask the chair of the Frost Fair to give any feedback, Councillor Tucker. Thank you. Um, I should move on to the climate emergency uh, group because I'm signing a document and I'll come back to myself if that's all right, Councillor Rennie Dougal. Okay, yes. So, um, so we started with Melissa's report and she is organising what she's calling a food trail along with other people because one of the things we have to be really concerned about is food security. Um, and the food trail is going to highlight locally obtained foods and organic foods, so that people in the Glastonbury and streets and wider areas will be able to know where they can access um, local foods. That seems to be a very important point. She also talked about the retrofit project, which is looking um, Glastonbury wide, at how people can actually retrofit their houses in order to reduce energy. So it's not just, I mean, we started with the tap hall and that is going ahead and um, now it's looking to the wider town and informing people in the wider town. So various homes are going to be asked to be open homes so that people can go and see how they can make their own homes as energy efficient <coughs> as possible because one of the key things we need to do is reduce energy use. Um, that's a very important thing. Um, and also there was talk about, because the neighbourhood plan is now coming back up and being re-looked at, is to put climate emergency aspects into the neighbourhood plan, which were not put in when it was devised four or five years ago, because it's now come into greater importance and so should come into the neighbourhood plan. So she's going to be looking at that with Michael White. Um, Michael White is also going to take on getting a citizen assembly up and running. He started the process by contacting other local councils that have already held citizens assemblies with regard to climate emergency and what we can do to make ourselves resilient and adaptable in the face of the tsunami that is breaking over us. Um, so there's been an information store happening, I don't know whether people have seen it on market days, um, to give information because one of the key things that is needed is for information to go out to the Glastonbury community about what they can do in order to make themselves resilient and adaptable. Um, and also a fair trend has been part of that information store. Um, being very concerned about the pollution levels in the River Brew, as the report has come out, showing that those are dangerous levels of pollution. Um, and again, Michael White is taking on looking at the pollution levels. And there's also a suggestion while well, well, we're looking with the Town Deal Fund and the use of different buildings for different things, is that we set up something called an eco hub. Now this has been done very well in other places like Guildford and an eco hub will be a place where people could come to get advice and help and information about what they can do themselves to um, make themselves resilient and adaptable. So what we're focusing on at the moment is very much is information, getting information out to people so that, so that they can make the changes that they need to make so the Glastonbury as a whole will hopefully survive rather better than might otherwise do in the face of what is, is already being down. And I see that the travel problem is actually part of this whole emergency that, that, that is, is 
creating our trust system. Thank you. Any questions for Councillor Serena or any Dougal? Thank you, Serena. Um, we now move to Glastonbury and Bloom. Um, what I need to report about that is that Glastonbury is sending a contingent to the In Bloom seminar, which is in beer. And imagine my disappointment when I found out that was a place. <laughs> and, um, You're in sick. <laughs> so um, we, of course, beer obviously is a lovely place. I've looked it up on the internet, but um, we will be going there, um, and hopefully we will be able to come back enthused for this year. Um, is there anything else we wish to add to that, Connor? Um, the only thing that I would add, uh, Your Worship, is that the Glastonbury and Bloom Committee have agreed to refurbish the telephone box outside of the town hall, just, just down here. Um, so I've spoken with our caretaking team. Um, we've purchased the necessary uh, paint materials. So what they're going to do is remove all of the panes of glass, uh, <coughs> rub down the frame, prime it, repaint it, and then we're going to have wooden shelves constructed inside with trough planters. Then it's going to be a vertical planter, very similar. I don't know if any of you have been to Southgate Shopping Centre in Bath. They've got a number of them there. And I led on exactly the same kind of project in my own parish of Peace down St. John. We're also going to replace the signs in the top. Uh, two of them that face out to Magdalene Street and will face um, back into the compound here. Eventually, hopefully, the atrium between the Town Hall and St. Dunstan's House will say Glastonbury. And then the one that faces down the street there that you'll be able to see from the information centre will say in bloom. So hopefully when that all comes together for the 1st of May, ready for the summer planting to be put out, it will be a much brighter and more <coughs> jolly um, feature to the street here than it is at the moment. Jolly good. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. We now move on to Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. Councillors, there... Um, it transpires. There's been an absolute uh, enthusiasm for this uh, year's celebrations, which also coincide with the 100th anniversary of the amazing pageant of Alice Buckton, which also had the film made of it, Glastonbury, past and present. Uh, and a great deal of enthusiasm around how we can celebrate the town and our connection, our ancient historic connection with the sovereignty of this land. And um, imagine our, our, um, our sadness to find out that the budget that we thought that we had agreed, £4,000, which everybody was working towards, was in fact not agreed at all with anybody. Um, a, a bit of a shock to the committee, uh, a shock to Connor, I imagine, when you found out, <laughs> but not a shock to the responsible finance officer who said that this council had never agreed to put any funds towards the Queen's Jubilee. I, I was saddened to hear that as I'm working with a parish at the moment who are minuscule compared to Glastonbury who put six, they've only got uh, 1,500 people in their parish but they put a £6,000 budget together so Glastonbury has no budget towards the Jubilee so um, in order to rectify that um, Connor has been looking into some options for us and Connor I'm going to actually ask you if you would be happy to speak to this because you have a much better understanding of what you've been doing than I do Thank you very much, Your Worship. So, uh, members, um, what the Platinum Jubilee Committee have been working toward um, is a, a number of celebrations across the entire year to mark the Platinum Jubilee. The first occasion to mark the Platinum Jubilee was the Ascension Day screenings of the Glastonbury past and present film here in the Town Hall, which were very well received by the members of the public. Um, who, who came to watch. I believe it was nearly 300 across the three different screenings came to watch um, that film. Um, the committee are also uh, working in partnership with the National Trust to light the, uh, the beacon, which after long, uh, long deliberations has been found. Um, uh, so that will be lit on Thursday the 2nd of June at 9.45 p.m. So do please, of course, join us. Um, the next event is on Friday the 3rd of June, and this is focused toward children and young people, um, where we wish for them and their parents to partake in a procession down the high street, which is uh, recreated from the Alice Buckton film, uh, which will culminate in the Abbey, which is opening free of charge for the entire day on Friday the 3rd of June. 
We're going to encourage people to take in picnics and provide entertainment. Um, there'll be a band playing. We're hoping to commission a mummers play, provide children's entertainers um, uh, to entertain those in the Abbey and for the procession to have put craft packs uh, to all the children in the town um, to create crowns and scepters so that they may dress up and uh, process in the procession as if they were queens and kings. Um, then, mostly on Saturday for the Town Council, we are taking a bit of a break. However, that is the date of the Platinum uh, Party at the Palace, which everyone can enjoy on the BBC. And then on Sunday, the 5th of June, um, Councillor Coles, I know you'll be very keen on this, um, we are going to have a, a street party on Magdalen Street and up the High Street for the big Jubilee lunch, and that will follow, follow the church service in the morning. So those events, because they currently do not have any budget, I have applied to the National Lottery to fund the events that are happening on the long weekend. So that comes to the value of £6,900. The Youth Provision Committee have very kindly, if that grant funding does not come in in full or at all, have in principle agreed for £3,000 to be taken from their um, balance to cover the materials for children and young people provided to the schools. <coughs> what I'm asking the council to do is to underwrite the entire value of the grant application to £6,900 in case it does not come through, but noting that £3,000 can come from the Youth Provision Committee and anything else can come from reserves if that grant funding does not come through. We are also asking for an additional £1,500 net of VAT so that the other planned events, as in the Ascension Day screening, which has already happened, and uh, there are plans hopefully for an event on St George's Day, to also take place. So that entire budget comes to £8,400. So the recommendations that I'm asking you to consider um, I will read them out one by one, and then it will be up to yourself your wish, whether you wish to take it on block or, for, or to go through them again one by one. Thank so you. the first recommendation is to ratify the submission of the grant application to the National Lottery Community Fund for £6,900, because they require your permission for me to submit that. Now, I will just note that I've already submitted it, because every day I did not submit it, it was pushing back the date when we could get the money. So you just need to ratify that that has happened. The next recommendation is to note that the £3,000 could be taken from the Youth Provision Committee to fund elements for children and young people of the event on Friday the 3rd of June if the National Lottery Grant is unsuccessful or only awarded in part. Then the third recommendation is to underwrite the remainder of the grant application up to the value of £3,900 in case it is unsuccessful or only awarded in part to allow the planned events on the long bank holiday weekend to still take place. And then the next one is to consider awarding a further £1,500 net of VAT for the other uh, celebrations, bringing our total budget to £8,400. And then to authorise the advisory committee to organise the planned events with monthly reports to yourself here at Fort Council. So, councillors, that's a very comprehensive uh, review of what's been happening. Um, I think that this is a, a once in a lifetime, in fact, probably some lifetimes we'll never see anything quite as remarkable as a monarch being on the throne for 70 years. Um, so we're being asked to underwrite £6,900 and to also add to that another £1,500 mm -hmm. for <coughs> the screening of the event the, of the Alice Buckton film, which has already happened, and for an event on St George's Day, which will it actually create the mummers play that will be done in the Abbey in June, which, uh, which will um, also include young people and uh, be quite a spectacular sort of thing. Reclaiming as well our connection to St George, as the Georgian Pilgrim clearly shows, um, a, a legend there that is quite unknown, but Glastonbury is going to put it back on the map. Um, so, councillors, would you like to just do this as time is marching on as just one, one, um, yeah, one block? Councillors, all those in favour? 
Thank you. Connor, thank you so much for all the hard work that you and the committee have been doing on this. Finally, neighbourhood plan. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the neighbourhood plan thanks to the wonderful company called Hermes, who decided that it would be much better for them to take the front of my car away whilst I was parked. So um, <laughs> that left me in Bridgewater whilst I was imagining what a wonderful meeting you were having here. So um, I'm not sure who chaired the neighbour plan meeting. Was I it did. Councillor Serena Rendig, would you just like to briefly let us know what happened? Oh my gosh, can I remember what happened? Oh, I know what happened. Connor asked us all to look at the previous plan that had been done four years ago and to make any comments and amendments and let him have those comments and amendments. Thank you very much. Councillor I uh, Councillor Coles. Uh, can I give you a word of caution? The beacon that's gonna be lit on oh, the right. tour. Yeah. Put a guard on it because the last time it was lit, someone went up there and lit it a half an hour or an hour yeah. before time, before yeah. the vicar got up. Yeah, we, do. we are we aware of that, that. Thank you. yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you had warned me beforehand, I did actually make very brief notes on what happened well, and I haven't got them with me. And Councillor Madhu, I'm sure considering the time, that's probably that's good just enough, as well. Councillor yeah. <laughs> um, Yes, I'd also like to um, just, just to thank Connor for his work he's done on the previous item, and also to remind him that the Bassbury Scrap Store, they will be able to provide materials for a donation. If they can't, they can get other scrap stores to supply materials to them. So it should be a low cost and recycling the way of using mm -hmm. materials. Councillor Lund, they are already part of the group looking at the Jubilee, so no, well, no, well meant. I just thought yeah. I'd add, add more to the yeah, word. Yeah. Thank you. So, <laughs> So now we move on to reports from outside bodies. Tandil's phone, Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Richard. Um, I hope most of you did have an opportunity to go into the temple on 20th of February. There was, there was a good display of, of the projects uh, spread around, and we had 350 members of the public come in and have a look um, with, with businesses, <coughs> people who were interested in being involved in it. Um, and I think all in all, it was, a, it was pretty pretty good event actually. Uh, it's probably the first time that a lot of the individual projects had an opportunity to look at the other projects because as it's evolved it's been really tricky for other people to know what everybody else was doing. Um, one project has dropped out as Paul has alluded to um, and, and, and it hasn't well, dropped out, it's been removed. Well it's been removed and it was removed by the board and I know he's trying to say that that there was a rift between he and I. I've not got a rift with you, Paul, and I can assure you that when the discussion took place on the board, I um, noted my interest on the Bailey's side and I didn't get involved in the conversations or any of the voting. So as far as I'm concerned, I've not got a rift with you, but if you've got a problem with me, I'm sorry about that. It's not how I hoped it would proceed. But the lesson learned is that many of the other body who are taking the financial responsibility for this, mm -hmm. and they have to satisfy the government through this green book. Whilst we've got the projects and we've got a work and we we've, we've got allocated money, unless we deliver through the process that many have set up for us and we actually deliver it to satisfy the government green book, none of us are going to get any money. So we've all got to make sure that we, unfortunately, have to play the game. It might not be how we used to work in Glastonbury, but this is a heck of a lot of money, and we're having to do a huge amount of work to get anything through the, through the budget. Um, you might be interested to know now that Melissa is helping on the Bailey's factory and obviously with her interest in sort of the regeneration and, and in her interest in the climate emergency, we're trying to build as many things into that project as we possibly can to help it not only tick the boxes but be an exemplar project for Glastonbury. So, that's the way we're having to work, but I can tell you the amount of documents that you have to produce to get it, the money in every different which way is unbelievable. I mean, we have spent hours and hours going through all these different documents. 
So it is a warning, I think, for all the projects that unless we actually jump through all the hoops that have been put in front of us, we aren't going to get the money. Um, that's not to say that the, the officers aren't working really diligently to help us get through, and there's various consultants been brought in as well, but it's not going to be a simple task as, as perhaps the first money we had when we had the half a million pounds and we were just allowed to get on and spend it. This is a totally different ball game, and uh, we're really going to have to work hard to, to get it. I, I'm, I'm confident, especially with our new acting chairman, um, that this is going to be achievable, but it's, 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 a, it's a big task. I'll answer any questions that I can. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Lund. Okay. Well, all right. So the gripe, as you call it, was between Mendip Council and the owners of the Bailey's building. And what I think is really disturbing about all of this is the fact that confidentiality has been imposed all the way through. So none of us were able to talk about what was going on. But what, what my view of what was going on was that Mendip said they'd arranged and agreed for the Environment Centre to be housed in the Bailey's building. We went as far as to define exactly what amount of space was required. That was 900 square metres. Um, the Bailey's project leader agreed with that. We were going ahead and then last summer, as you well know, we had a site meeting on site and all those plans were turned on their head when the representative of the BERT organization said, no, we've got other plans for building, you can't, you can't have that much space and therefore the project was threatened. Now, it moved on since then and there was a, a mediation process that took place and whilst we declined to be there, it was decided that there still was no space or there would, no be, there would not be space given for an environment centre. All of this was under confidentiality. Even we as the project didn't, didn't get access to the reports. We don't even know what the report said in the end. But my point to you was that you knew you didn't want to have that amount of space being occupied, but you left it right to the last minute to actually say to mend it that was the case. And that 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 instigated a whole lot of argument and fuss that came from that. What we said, give us a chance to finish our um, business case. Well, after all, we're three months away, four months away from completing that, albeit it would be pretty hard to complete a business case if you don't have a location for the centre, for the college. But we were confident that we might well be able to find a new location within the temporary boundary. But Mendip decided that the outcome would not be positive for them and therefore we would be removed. And at last week's um, Chamber of Commerce meeting, it was pointed out to me, it was all about outcomes as far as Mendip were concerned and they were only concerned with that, nothing else. But they didn't give us a chance to make the outcome. So that is that is where I am at. I would still like there to be a public inquiry about this. And I think that there is still time, if the government decided so, to put the project back on the on the rails, to give the chance for the business plan to be created, and for the project to find a new site. And that everybody's going to be happy. And after all, this was a project that was that was supported by the community town plan of 2007. Now, I know that's a long time away, but there hasn't been another community plan since then. So we can only go back to 2007 and talk about that. The neighborhood plan hasn't been ratified, so the neighborhood plan doesn't talk about the environment center. So there is no other opportunity. If we lose this one, it's gonna be very hard to raise about three million pounds to create the sort of feature and, and um, resources and facility that we've all been looking forward to and we've been planning for pretty much sort of 15 years now. So that's that's where it's at. Thank you, Councillor. So um, we now move on, uh, looking at the time, to item 15. This is a result 
of the number of meetings that this council has had with our neighbour street parish council. We've both been looking at the way that our councils may be impacted by the unitary authority and what we might be able to, to think about working together on as this unfolds. There will be a, a thing called a local community network being established. It will be quite remarkable if Glastonbury and Street are not in the same local community network, so we've, we've anticipated that we will be, and we've begun the, the conversations. Conscious that there will be an election in May, we are hoping that the outcome of these conversations may be some useful advice or useful pointers for the new councils that come in. And of course, none of us sat around this table may be here in May. Absolutely. And um, so it, it would be extremely useful for new councillors to understand what has been thought of by the folk who've been here for the last at least three years. <coughs> so one of the things that we've come up with as a joint um, project that came out of these meetings was to have a pump track street were very keen for a, a pump track to be created they have actually i believe some funding that might be able to support the creation of a pump track and glastonbury just like the wurzels with the combine harvester the, 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 i've got a brand new combine harvester i'll give you the key we have a wonderful jubilee park which already is landscaped for mountain bikes so it seemed a useful idea to look at whether or not there was any way that these two things had come together so connor has put together terms of reference for this and that's what we're here tonight to look at connor would you wish to speak to this um i don't think there's anything that i have to add your worship other than to take any feedback from members or if you wish to um agree to the terms of reference, we can then forward them onto the street to see if they're also in agreement. I am hoping that the, the, um, this uh, project doesn't become a game of tennis between the two councils. I've tried to draft the terms of reference to, to help that not occur. So, councillors, this committee, because we're moving into PERDA, this committee will actually come into play after the election. But we're setting it up as a as a gesture of goodwill between the two parishes to come up with a joint project. It would be quite a, a remarkable thing to do, as I'm sure I'm not sure whether Street and, and Glasby have ever done a project together. But um, councillors, what do you feel about this? Are you happy to approve these draft terms of reference that we've been sub? Um, I'll, I'll agree it, uh, Your Worship, even though I am apprehensive because I believe the brew is the separation, but uh, I will go along with it. To, the other side of the bridge. to quote a while and say, hands across the water, Councillor, hands across the water. <laughs> Councillor Tucker, you wish to speak to this? No, uh, so all those in favour of the terms of reference? They are approved. Thank you. Councillors, if only all votes were just that easy. Um, Councillors, I have just a very few announcements. Uh, one, one quite poignant is on the 17th of February, um, I had the honour and, and great sorrow to attend the funeral of uh, Geoffrey Ash, a gentleman who I have a huge amount of love for. Um, and it was absolutely remarkable to to witness his funeral um he was such an amazing gentleman other councillors were there councillor coles uh, councillor barnett councillor smiling mcdougall were also in attendance and um he, he was such a significant person he even had a, a bishop there to to and the high sheriff was there um on the 25th of February, I attended the open day for the um, town deal, and it was quite remarkable to see the amazing projects that are there. The 3rd of March, I attended a preview at the new art gallery, the Heart of the Tribe, and I must say to any councillors, if you've never been to the Heart of the Tribe gallery, do go. It's a really absolutely top gallery in the town. And on the 5th of March, I attended a rather unusual uh, day. This is the start, the organizers hope, of something that will happen annually. 
is a day that they might call Crow's Day, which is to, in, in recognition of John Crow, who is the, uh, some of you may know, the protagonist of a book called The Glastonbury Romance by John Cooper Powers. And they're hoping to have this as an annual event where folk come and read from the Glastonbury Romance. We're quite remarkable that there is a gentleman in town called John Crow, uh, who is quite a well-known um, person within the uh, theatre world. He's a uh, ne real next John Constable, but he's been involved in the Southern Mysteries and um, doing work at, with the... Um, the Globe Theatre and all sorts of things like that. He's currently residing in town. So he was there reading John Crow's parts. It's quite lovely. So that might, on the 5th of March, that might become an annual event. And I hope it does. Uh, any of you who've read Dustin Romance, it is a hefty tome, will we'll know just how remarkable a book it is. So that's what I've been doing lately. Thank you. We now move on to communications and announcements. We have something from Nalk. Yes, Parliamentary constituency changes afoot, and uh, you are encouraged to look at the NOC website and uh, re acquaint yourself with, with the changes. For this area, the proposals are that we, as a town, start looking towards Somerton direction, and our MP is likely to be covering the uh, Somerton and Street and Glastonbury, as opposed at the moment it's going the other direction, it goes out towards the west, towards um, Highbridge. That's, uh, I'd encourage you to look at that. And the other things to mention to you under communications and announcements is the next meeting of the joint sub joint councils is tomorrow evening at seven o'clock at the library in Street. So anybody able to join um, join us at that meeting would be much appreciated. Thank you. Councillors, would, I would strongly urge you to come to the joint meeting of both parish councils. They're extremely useful and it's also um, something that we, we really want to focus on some of the issues that are really impacting on the town, like health and well-being and things like that. So please do come along. Um, could you repeat where that meeting was? Please? It's at the Library in Street, which is next to the... It's, the, it's not the old library, it's the, the sort of building that was the parish council offices, I suppose, um, yeah. which is opposite. By Crispin Hall. By Crispin Hall. Parish rooms. The parish rooms, thank you. Fire was it the old fire station? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there we are. When is it? At uh, 7 o'clock. And. Um, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on tomorrow evening. Any other communications and announcements? Councillor Lindsay McDougall. Um, yes. Um, as part of our fair trade status, um, two things we need is uh, council support, which we have, and, um, and we need to have a fair trade meeting um, to uh, review our next objective. So, if anybody's interested in Do you have a meeting arranged? No, but I'm saying we need to arrange one. And perhaps a few people who join. I'd be very happy to attend if, if you let us know when you're, you're thinking of having it. But it could be arranged now. Perhaps we can arrange it after the, after the meeting, if that's all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other communications announcements? Your Worship. Oh, Councillor Nath. Um, uh, just a little bit. Um, uh, uh, I'm duty bound. Uh, I've been asked if. Um, uh, before uh, anyone makes uh, any decisions on the uh, PSPO, uh, that uh, the, um, the people that are making the decisions, could they walk down through uh, Kenard Moore before the decisions are made? Uh, I've been asked that by a, by a resident. Thank you. I saw... yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cox. I have one, one comment to make, uh, Your Worship. Uh, we haven't reminded, or you haven't, you haven't, or Town Crow hasn't reminded people about the um, the event for Ukraine that you're, ho you're hosting. Thank you so team. much. Okay. Councillor, I'm indebted to you um, <laughs> with all the things that have been going on tonight. Uh, thank you, first of all, councillors, for resolving that this council stands with Ukraine. On Saturday, the 19th of March, at quarter to six, in combination with some of the churches in town, some of the faith groups, we are going to hold a vigil for Ukraine. 
This will be from quarter to six. It will be at the peace pole and on the, on the outside area of the information center. At six o'clock, we'll be lighting the unity candle and we'll be observing the silent minute. And then uh, there'll be, a, before we do that, there'll be a declaration of our support for Ukraine. I'm hoping that we'll be able to have the Ukrainian flag flying from the town hall. And um, after that, we are asking people to bring, uh, if Councillor uh, Knapper, if you'd like to stand up, you can, you can display the colours, yellow and blue ribbons with you, so that we can tie them to the railings around the... Well, I tried this evening. Very yeah. good. <laughs> to tie them around the... Um, uh, on the railings of the, of the um, information centre and perhaps to the um, surround of the oak tree. Not on the oak tree, but on the metal surround of the oak tree, just to, to show that we fully support the people of Ukraine in this time of crisis. Thank you. So is there a collection point? There, there is a collection point in town. Um, if you go on to, to Facebook, you'll be um, typing Glastonbury Ukraine collection point. You'll find you'll find that out. Facebook. They've been collecting for just over a week now, I believe. I've been seeing the posts. I th I'm not quite sure. Is it is it the shop down here on on Benedict Street? The um, I don't know if anybody can help me with that. But you, if you want to find out, and then sorry, Councillor Cottle. Yeah, I was going to come back on that actually. Uh, because I had conversations with my Mendic colleagues over this, and we discovered that they had already, all, the, all of the, the clothes and things like that, they already had enough of this. They were asking for donations of cash, basically, hard cash, to the, uh, to the main charities, like the Red Cross. Personally, I don't have the Red Cross for them. And uh, I think it's, that's what they were looking for. Okay, so the, yeah. As Councillor Barnett says, is it a disasters fund? Yeah, the disasters mm. fund are advertising extensively on TV and giving out uh, numbers, emails and text numbers for donations. Thank you. So, um, Councillor Coles. Uh, yeah. uh, if anyone's interested, the Flying Scotsman will be coming down from Panaton to... St. Ives, next Sunday, it'll be passing through Castle Kerry Station about 2.30. Non-stop from, from London to St. Ives. Great. Um, I'll have enough water on it, apparently. I'll have two tenders on it. That's so they got enough water. Sorry, there'll be a lot of smoke. <laughs> steam, yeah, a lot of steam. Uh, so, um, Councillors, if we've, done, if we've had communications now, it's conscious that we might try to end the, the meeting before 10 o'clock. Any correspondence? Yes, Your Worship. Um, there's correspondence from Fen Bagius, and uh, she's from the um, uh, community network. And that's, there's an, an event here on March the 21st. I'll read it to you. The Glastonbury Dementia Action Alliance, GDAA, would like to invite you to a networking event at Glastonbury Town Hall on Monday the 21st of March from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We are organising this event to give professionals and others who support people with memory loss and dementia an opportunity to connect in person and explore the question, what next for dementia and memory loss support? So I'd encourage you to attend that if you can, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Councillors, um, just one thing that I'm conscious and mindful of is that we must be aware that on the 21st of March too, we are entering into PERDA. So do, do bear your thoughts on that. If you're tempted to respond to things on social media or whatever, we, we just have to be extra careful at, uh, after that point because of the election coming up. Um, we, news releases, I wondered whether our vigil for Ukraine could be something that we promote. Yes. Thank you. Any other items you think might be worthy of a news release? Many of the people being slaughtered in Ukraine are Roma victims. There's a Roma flag, I think that's especially included in the Roma flag. I can say there's a massive amount of Roma victims. Many of them are being taken to use. Thank you for that point. Very useful. So, councillors, actions arising from this meeting. 
Gerard, would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Your Worship. Just a few. Just bear with me. Uh, there's an action, Your Worship, for the organisation of a meeting next Tuesday evening, following the planning to, to discuss the public space protection orders. There's an action for... an action for me to write to the um, cabinet at the district council with reference to the um, removal of rough sleeping service funding and uh, there's an action for me to ah it came through from from lindsay there um to help set up the, a meeting for the trade fair trade thank you very much those are the three actions you worship well, thank you. So we now end the uh, public part of the, the meeting now. We have... Excuse me, Chair. Could I suggest another action? Is to, is to follow up the, uh, the investigations to Q, uh, because if, if they're not coming up with anything, we're getting to a point where we can't plant a tree in, in May or June. Yeah. You know, we need that as soon as possible in order to uh, source a local... Uh, Council, I think I think what we've agreed is to source a local tree, but I'd said that still doesn't stop us trying to find the okay. original limbs. Good. Okay. Um, Councillors, I, I now close this public part of the meeting. 